For those of you tuning in in the paddock here today and for those of you watching from live around the world, welcome to Newcastle Motorsports Park here, host of the second round of the 2023 Stars Championship Series. My name's Xander Clemens. Alongside me here is Simon Sykes. Qualifying just getting underway on the racetrack here for King of the Castle. And it is a packed house here at over 200 entries for the second round of the season. We saw some awesome racing at Trackhouse Motorplex to kick things off. We roll right into the second round of the season just a month later here, Simon. Yeah, absolutely. With a great debut on the OKN uh, class that stars at GoPro Motorplex Trackhouse, as we now know. But great to see a good field here again today. They had a, a stacked uh, practice yesterday, seven drivers within about a tenth of a second. So we're going to roll straight into KA Masters, I believe, to start us off for the qualifying of the day. Yeah, five minutes right now left on the clock. The first couple laps coming in. Of course, for all you tuning in from live around the world, make sure to send in your shout outs to your favorite driver that you're cheering on here this weekend as we take you for a lap around Newcastle Motorsports Park on the Stars National Layout. It is the opposite direction than what this place has been most years. Uh, and uh, it adds in one extra chicane corner uh, going down to the uh, turn three, four, five complex. You'll see that now as we roll through the final turn and let's watch them coming on to the front straight away. So you're watching Andy Kutcher there in the 296 red speed. Here he comes through the dog leg. That's a unofficially turn number one. Then turn number two, that first real corner hard on the brakes at the end of that long straightaway and then they'll rock it down this backstretch that does have an infield section they'll go from there into this monza banked corner and uh, that'll be turned three four and five headed down into the scoreboard hairpin so you go turn three that left turn four that big banked right turn five that left-hander to get you back onto the straightaway and then turn six a scoreboard corner you have turn seven this dog leg that leads you into what they call the green corner here at newcastle motorsports park that's turn number eight then you'll roll over to turn number nine, another full throttle right-hand kink. In fact, it's two of them to set you turn 10. And then turn number 11, that cell tower hairpin here, which is a big passing zone. And then kind of what is a horseshoe style section. You go from there, you have to quickly back uh, over to the right side of the track for a double left, turns 12 and 13. Turn 14 here, or known as the blue corner as well. And then through this stretch, into turns 15, 16, 17, and 18 to finish the lap off. 15 right here, decent passing zone, as well as turn 16. Little sketchy, just enough to get by. And then the final two corners, really tricky to get around. Turn 17 and 18, at least to pass a driver, because you're mostly full throttle setting up for this long front straightaway. The lap time's coming in for KA Master. Andy Kutcher continues to lead the way right now. A 115-087 puts him two tenths up on contender from round number one, John Bonanno. He's in that blue and yellow comp cart and uh, they'll head over into the infield Monza once again around a handful of the drivers he's been running throughout uh, the uh, season that were near that six driver pack it felt like almost the entire weekend in KA Masters back at Trackhouse Motorplex any of the six were uh, competitive John Bonanno won that first heat race of course got a penalty he's well inside the championship chase and he trails right now I believe behind Christopher Horan aboard that uh, cosmic chassis so you're watching second and third on your screen headed over to that turn 10 and 11 section into the cell tower corner Go in this direction here, Simon. Of course, the big change for everybody, the rubbers laid the opposite way on this racetrack. They were testing all the way for open practice as the track was still open into Tuesday and Wednesday, of course, but that was not the way that they were driving here from Friday on. So you're laying rubber the opposite way. The line is totally different, and it makes, makes it very tricky to get around the circuit. The drivers are definitely going to have to work hard to figure figure this place out. It's been a staple of the North American karting community over the past 15 years or so. So it's great to see uh, Stars Championship Series coming here for their round two. Uh, obviously competitive to start off. Andy Kutcher up top with a 15087 behind him. John Bonanno with a 15-231. He will get popped by Brian Dinelli with a 15 Point nineteen, So competitive start, minute and a half remaining left in this KA Masters class. Yeah, and that uh, 1590, that's from Brian Daniele running in a pack a little bit further on the racetrack. On your screen, it's that black suit and purple and pink cosmic of Christopher Horan. They just worked their way around the 279 machine. A Chris Kutcher, he sits down in the seventh spot. Bonanno again currently in third overall. Horan down in that fifth position. Uh, Mark Steele got up into the top five aboard his Bureau Art machine, the Canadian goes to fourth uh, but what we're watching is third on the racetrack fifth on the racetrack trying to hunt down the guy in first Andy Kutcher uh, his best lap coming back on lap number two three laps completed it won't be a ton of laps they'll get with how big the circuit is this layout I believe comes out to roughly 1.2 miles in length it is the longest track uh, to begin with Newcastle Motorsports Park that is 
on the national calendar. It'll also be the longest one lap time wise by far on the Stars Championship Series specific schedule as we go from Trackhouse Motorplex with times in those high 40, uh, 40s, low 50s with a good lap that time by Chris Horan at 114.91. He'll go now to the top to then here. We run 75 second lap times. Then we go to the Motorsports Country Club of Cincinnati and pit race as well. Pittsburgh uh, coming up next. Cincinnati to close the season. Those will be sub minute lap times. So uh, that means, again, they're only getting a couple shots at it. One bobble means you've got to wait a whole 60 to 70 seconds to try again here in qualifying. It's especially tough when you have a track this long to get every corner right. Uh, a good driver once told me that it's better to run 9 out of 10 through all of the corners than hit everything perfect but screw one up. And that's certainly true on this track with as long as it is and as technical as it is. Uh, it, it's a hunt to get the laps in, especially when you don't have that much time in qualifying, Xander. Well, we know Chris Horan's quick. He was able to put down that burner last time, punching his own hole in the air and chasing Andy Kutcher. Kutcher went a little quicker at a 15-0. The checker is out now, so this will be the last shot at it. And we can see that uh, blue and yellow fluorescent uh, comp car to John Bonanno right behind him. So he's closing up. If he can get a good tow coming onto the front stretch, it'll be a really good lap for Bonanno going off the coattails of Haran. Across the line, Kutcher cannot improve enough. Bonanno improves, but it won't be enough to dethrone Chris Saran. He goes to second, a 15-0-3-5. The top four clock in. Brian Danielli will be one of the next one to cross the line as uh, his group comes on through. That's, Brand, uh, I believe, Chris Stevens going by. He jumps up to 14th. Still waiting for Danelli, and he'll be the last one inside the top five to try and uh, get across the line. Ryan Kastner still to finish. So is Mark Steele. Jacob Neary as well in eighth. Sean Bailiff, owner of the Trinity Carding Group co uh, co operation, is down in ninth. We'll wait and see if he gets that final lap in. Takes a while, of course, for everyone to come across the line, but I think they may have pulled on in one lap early, so that'll lock us in for qualifying. And just like that, the first session in the books, the grid set for heats one and two. Chris Horan, John Bonanno, Chris, uh, Andy Kutcher, and Chris Kutcher, row two. Brian Danielli, row number uh, three on the inside. A three-tenth spread for the top five, and we'll come back to you with more. The first class in the books, plenty more still to get graded as you're watching Car Chasers coverage. A king of the castle here from Newcastle Motorsports Park. Welcome to Ohio Kart Parts, the Midwest's largest Burrell Art racing go-kart dealer. We carry Burrell Art, Daniel Ricardo, Charles Leclerc, and Robert Kubica brand of go-karts, as well as parts from names you trust. Chassis components from Freeline, engines from IAMI, Briggs & Stratton, and soon-to-be Tillotson, electronics from AIM Technologies, MG Tires, Taika Axles, seating from Tillet, Arai Helmets, and 3 tenths race products. Visit us online at www.ohiocartparts.com, at our facility in Lorain, Ohio, or at the local track on race weekends. If we don't have it, call us at 440-628-CART. That's 5278. And we will do what we can to help you out.
So welcome back here to Newcastle Motorsports Park and King of the Castle, the second stop of the 2023 Stars Championship Series. Micro onto the racetrack now, the youngest age division here on the Stars Championship Series structure, and they're coming to start lap number one. They just got released from the pit lane, as you saw. Here comes the first group to uh, get across the line, and we'll get an idea of where they will shake out uh, for uh, the at least groups, not yet to get lap times. Danny O'Gara on the MPG Motorsports Cart Republic machine. Drops in right behind Enzo De Janeiro's Team Ferris Cart Republic. Enzo in the number 90 blue and black machine leads them over to turns three, four, and five. And in that little grouping, Jake Manalio and Colton Schneegenberg, who's been on a hot streak here and has been very active. He was with us last weekend at North Texas Cartway for the Texas Sprint Racing Series Spring Roundup Night Race. And just five days later, was back on track here on Friday uh, for the Stars Championship Series in Newcastle, Indiana. He leads or he trails this group on that team, GWR Energy. And then in the middle, uh, Jake Manalio on that TFR Cart Republic as well. But Enzo De Janeiro will lead them into the cell tower. And uh, this class, of course, it's such a big racetrack with the little nine horsepower engines will rely heavily on the toe in qualifying. But the lack of experience, you won't see as much gamesmanship still. Maybe a little bit as when they come by the uh, grid and scale area, I'm sure some will get the signal for their mechanics or when to pass or when to maybe try and drop back. But you know, just as we talked about there with uh, only a handful of laps with how long the laps were in KA Master qualifying, you're really betting on yourself if you want to lead for a lap and drop back to set up a lap because you're going to get four to five chances at the most. These guys are going to run in the low 120 second range. They are, in fact, right on it. A 120 flat for Colton Sneegenberg at the end of the train. He'll initially set the benchmark. And it's a quick top four on your screen currently. This is what we expect. Should be quick by the end of the session. Again, only three minutes and 50 seconds remaining and a minute 20 per lap. That's not that many laps, Sander. They're going to have to get down to business quickly as we already see the top four forming a nice little draft line heading through the midsection of this Newcastle Motorsports Park. Yeah, as long as they work together, they'll be good. Two cars can make up a lot of ground in this class. We're talking five to six tenths of a second. So if someone is fast and not in this group of four, they'll need one more person to probably help them uh, to pull that uh, burner lap off. And as long as these guys stay single file as they are, if Enzo De Janeiro can hit his marks up front, we'll be good. Schneegenberg is going to pass on... Uh, the number nine of Jake Manolio there in the cell tower turn number 11 going through. But uh, as he gets out, didn't lose any time. He'll get pulled right back up to the rear bumper of Danny O'Gara's number 67 MPG Motorsports machine by the end of this uh, final sector of the racetrack here. Nearly full throttle through these 90s for the micro drivers. The brake pedal really only used in those big hairpin corners. Such a wide and sweeping racetrack. Again, it's no different than a full throttle circuit just like the Indianapolis 500 last week where that toe was all important. In fact, they separate the lap times based on toe and no toe times. Toe times and no toe, no toe not separated in qualifying here, but you're allowed to get that toe, and it's a big lap for Colton Schneegenberg doing just that, a 119.72. He stays on top of the board while De Janeiro, the leader of the train, goes second. Three drivers all in this front group breaking into the one minute 19 second barrier midway through this qualifying session. Two minutes, 20 seconds remaining. That top four still nose to tail, looking for every bit of draft they can manage throughout this lap. They're running nose to tail so far through the midfield section. A good run for these drivers so far. Colton Schneegenberg still sitting up top with a 119.72, followed closely by that number 90 machine, Enzo De Janeiro, in the, with a 119.77. Five. So only five hundredths of a second separating your top two currently. Yeah, just a little bit as Schneegenberg now moves himself to second in the pack. This will be another good lap for him. It's also a bit of a strategy call, passing drivers, because, of course, you go around them. That basically kills their lap, Simon. So if you're on a good enough lap, you think, especially with a driver in front that can kind of tow you back up for a tenth or two loss by going offline, you're going to basically kill the guy uh, in front of you's time when you pass him. Exactly. You want to plan these passes out to the team. Mostly on these long straights, you start making passes in the infield section. That's where you actually start losing the time. But we'll see a move down the long straight. That's how you get it done to maximize your lap time over this lap. They cross the line with just over a minute and 20 remaining. So it might be two more laps for these drivers getting a lucky break in their qualifying session. It'll be borderline. That's, of course, the benefit of going out at the front of the field versus the back. You sacrifice the potential to get one bonus lap. And when laps are at a premium, like in this class here, what looks to be four pushing five, 
Uh, that's super, super critical. Schneegenberg going by. That's about the best way to go. Again, running this direction for the Stars Championship Series. We'll come back here with the Scusa Summer Nationals and the U.S. Pro Kart Series over the course of the next two months. I believe they'll be going the opposite direction, which changes the dynamic a little bit of qualifying, especially in the faster classes, because when you've got this infield, much more technical section part of the racetrack at the end of the lap, and you've got your long straightaways at the beginning, it doesn't always pay dividends to try and uh, set yourself up for a big super toe off someone in front of you where you pull back up, you pull up to them in the first two corners of the circuit and you're trapped behind them the rest of the lap. The best way is how it was at uh, Trackhouse Mutterplex with that long front straightaway and the kind of run to the final corner. You'll toe at the very end, that last little speed boost where you don't get held up by how fast or slow they're going. You just get that extra bit of toe at the end of the lap. In this case, you got to do it at the beginning and get around him just like Colton did. And right there, perfectly done for Colton Schneegenberg, a 1945. And that's a big time to put up, but close, followed closely by the number 50, Emerson Lane. I don't believe he's in this group, so that might be another group on track getting their times down and going quick. He'll be done on that. Uh, this top group still one more lap to go. 19.450 is your pole time by Colton Schneegenberg in the number 16. He made that pass the beginning of last lap, getting it done on that first straight. With the reverse layout we're running this week, and you see that Monza banking on the second straight, so the drivers normally would have two massive straights to extract all the draft they possibly could, but it's cut short in the middle of the second one here in this reverse layout, Xander. Yeah, it definitely takes a little bit more of it out of uh, uh, the kind of just potential for five or six tenths of a big toe lap down to just a couple and maybe even less in some of the classes that are a little faster like pro stars like okn stars and even a little bit out of that ka senior stars class uh, to come towards the back half of the lineup again we're just on the front side this group will be the last ones to get across the line looks like Cade wolf didn't get the checkered as well he'll be the last one if he can get through but the timer just given the top four a chance for one more shot at it checkered across the line any more shuffling at the top we will see it. How about Jake Manalio there? Big time lap out of the number nine. He'll go by one, one thousandth of a second to the top. Third in line over Schneegenberg and uh, Emerson Lane. A late lap from the Texan. Emerson Lane on the number 50 out of that second group. A last second big ditch and he goes a tenth and a half clear, Simon. We had such a competitive run there at the end with a thousandth of a second separating the top two, but at the very, very last second, the number 50, Emerson Lane, throwing down a massive time of 119.28, putting him almost two tenths quicker than the next fastest on track, Xander. That was a phenomenal lap from Emerson Lane, and the number 50 will get to lead the field to the green. There's Cade Wolf going through in the 54. He ended up in six. There's Emerson Lane on that Trinity Karting Group Kart Republic. He puts the boys in green and white on the top of the leaderboard in Micro Swift qualifying with two very good laps at the end of the session and one heck of one on lap number five. Very impressive stuff from Emerson Lane here in Micro Swift. Jake Manalio second, Colton Schneegenberg third, Danny O'Gara fourth, Enzo De Janeiro in fifth, and then back to Cade Wolf in the sixth spot. It was a four-tenth difference there for the top six. And then a big gap further back. Sterling Mulata and seven. Tatsumi White, eighth. Parker Stewart in the ninth spot. Local kid Asher Ferris rounds out the top ten in a 24-driver Micro Swift division. But the top six all looking pretty racy here early on. And uh, as we go further back, there's Caleb Smith in 11th. Lawrence Perriman, 12th. Christopher Lavoy, 13th. Riley Dovalier ends in 14. Bryson Scales to round your top 15. Austin Taylor, another Indiana-based driver, in 16th on the MPG Motorsports machine. Griffin Vukic in the 17th spot. Drake Williamson, 18th. Callahan Myers, 19th. Hudson Howard, son of uh, former Indy 500 driver and IndyCar Series driver. Jay Howard qualifies 20th. Anthony Mazzaculo, 21st. George Zeminski, Trip Golnick, and Liat Simonellic. All 24 getting to put laps in, and now we go from one of the slowest classes, one of the more entry-level classes on the calendar or on the structure, to one of the fastest. Shifter Master and Rock Shifter Master headed onto the circuit here as they slowly gap themselves. We won't see too much toe laps in this one. That's why they're in no rush to get onto the circuit. They want to slowly bring their tires and engine temps up to where they want to be and find a nice clear piece of real estate to start setting down some burners. Joe Ruck, your round one winner back at the Stars Championship Series night fight at Trackhouse Motorplex, had a phenomenal run in the KZ uh, Shifter Master Division. He was a contender all week. They were close to him when he got to that main event. He walked the dog and rolled away from the field. On your screen is that GFC Rivera Racing, number 522, I believe, 
of Mike Rivera, if I'm not mistaken, as he works through the dog leg and comes out of turn number 14. He'll be the first one, I believe, across the line uh, to start a lap here in Shifter Master qualifying. So as Rivera will round the final two terms, we'll get a good look at the Gearbox class. Six speed, sequential transmission go-karts here. It is a lot of uh, hand movement. You'll see that right hand quickly come off the steering wheel at nearly uh, half of the lap. It feels like to pull those gears down this long straightaway and then bang them down into third or fourth gear for turn number two at the end down at the I-70 corner. These high, high horsepower carts, you will not see as much drafting as we did in the MicroSwift category. Instead, with as much grip as they are producing, they're going to wear those tires down quickly. So look for push and pull laps, you know, getting that time and then backing off, resetting for that next lap. That's going to be the key here in this Masters qualifying. So again, Mike Rivera, he's in that subcategory, the uh, Rock Shifter Master Division. Had a great run at Trackhouse Motorplex and uh, was joking me a little bit last night. He said, man, I didn't get any love. We had a great weekend. I'm here again, and I'm in the top five overall on a slightly detuned engine in comparison. That KZ power plant that's used for the Pro Masters Division, that is a multi-manufacturer, pretty much builder's open class. The Rock Shifter Master Division, it's a spin-off motor of the Vortex KZ engine and uh, tried to be a a little bit more economical, a little bit lower price, and a lot less you can do to try and make that thing faster. So it ends up running just a tick slower, and you would think that would be a disadvantage here on a high horsepower, full speed, 1.2 mile layout like Newcastle Motorsports Park, but Mike Rivera's been hovering the top five throughout practice day now. Of course, he's not gonna be fastest overall. He puts in a 109.26, a second and three tenths better for Joe Rook, the reigning number one plate holder on that Marinello Vermont Cart Company machine. Uh, and he right now is a little bit further back. I believe we've got one of his teammates on the circuit as well showed. Uh, no, that, that is Ruck sporting a new lid, I believe, potentially this weekend for Joe Ruck. He looks really proper as he gets by Evan Bat on that HMG Motorsports uh, Musgrave Factory cart uh, through turn uh, through the green corner, turn number eight. So Joe Ruck set in the benchmark of 107.92. His teammate, Justin Kelly, in only his second race aboard the Marinello, I believe not the first one uh, for Justin Kelly, only a tenth uh, off, a tenth off as well of him to go to Evan Bat there on the blue and black machine in third. And with three and a half minutes remaining, we're seeing the top three separated by just over two tenths of a second. Then it's almost a half second back to the 608 of Scott Presti in P4. And that is just the opening lap of this qualifying. So we'll look to see those times drop as they continue to push uh, with three minutes remaining on your screen. Joe Ruck pushing with Evan Bat closely following behind on that 604 machine, Xander. Yeah, we saw a little change in uh, the difference there. Bat right now just trying to uh, get a little bit of maybe a tub more than anything, a uh, marker in front of him, a rabbit to chase to help him hit his marks and see what the fastest driver all weekend so far has been doing as Ruck leads him into the uh, scoreboard corner turn at number six. Now, uh, Evan Bat, of course, Midwestern guy like Ruck himself and uh, spends a lot of time here at Newcastle Motorsports Park. He actually helped sponsor the Tacos and Tequila uh, event with uh, the company he's uh, associated with. Daredevil Brewing was helping out. It's a cool deal the Star Championship Series does. They try to do it here every time we come to Newcastle Motorsports Park and as many events as they can do. Throw a big pit party on Friday night after practice for all the drivers in attendance. And uh, very quickly, it was a big success. They ran out of tacos, had to switch over to burgers about midway or most of the way through it to make sure everybody had some food in them as well. Uh, Daredevil Brewing Company does a good job. I was there last week on the 500 week and so great to see them out in support. Uh, currently though, no improvements on that leaderboard. The first lap by for all the drivers seems to be holding so far as we see that tire wear start to come into effect. Ryan Frank, only one improving on that last lap, 6.05 machine moving up to P4 currently in the session. And you just saw there on the screen as well, Evan Bat pulling off to the side. That's exactly what Simon was talking about, the, uh, the push and then kind of cool down laps. So we'll see if he uh, sets up for another run at it. He'll be light on time, a minute 40 seconds left. So he'll need to get around here at least quick enough if he wants another shot or if he's going to sit on his laurels with that uh, third place qualifying effort that he's got right now. But everyone, like you said, Simon, uh, first, second, third, and fifth, all their best laps coming on lap number one, including Scott Presti, who just comes by the line. No improvement for Presti on the RS uh, machine. But here's Justin Kelly in the 686 black helmet, black suit, Marinello for the Vermont Cart Company race team. 
And uh, he right now, again, right behind his teammate Joe Rook. It's a 1-2 for the red, black, and yellow uh, boys and girls. And as they go to the final two turns, I don't know if we'll see any more movement. Knowing what we know about the tire wear, knowing how quickly those things will heat up here at a hot uh, race weekend here in Newcastle. And indeed, no changes that time. Uh, for Ruck or for Kelly. No improvement for Ryan Frank. Improvements further back for Michael Gouache. He goes to six at a 108.74. And a big off that time for, I believe, one of the uh, Cartworks racing machines. That was uh, looking back, Simon. That was Ryan Frank there just getting a little bit wide, trying to push. Uh, he's, the, like I said, the only one that's been improving since lap one, so certainly trying to make the most of the session. But these tires firing off very quickly. It's hard to get them back once you've used them up. So all these drivers went out, pushed immediately, and with 20 seconds remaining, it's going to be a tough task to ask anyone to go faster late in the session. Yeah, you saw Joe Ruck letting one of the DR North Americas by. That's the 665, uh, I believe. Indeed, the 665 DR machine, and we don't have him. Oh, that's Lance Lane right there. He currently sits eighth. Sorry, Lance Lane, about eight tenths to find, but don't know if he'll find much of it here at the end. John Crow gets a good lap there on lap number four. He gets a 108.56. Still need about six tenths to the pole. Mike Rivera, first one to the checkered flag, and I think most of our drivers, if they haven't pulled in already, they will now. Justin Kelly went by the line on a cool down lap. Lance Lane does not improve. Joe Ruck went to the pit lane as well, and that'll pretty much do it as uh, all of your top three have pulled in. Scott Presti did not improve last time by and I think he may have gone to the scale line as well. Ryan Frank on a cool down lap there puts a 119 on that last lap so no changes and that'll be to be expected here and I think we'll see much of the same when the pro stars hit the racetrack that first lap will look to be the money lap it seems like it here and that's uh, again a combination of a bunch of factors Simon. Obviously high horsepower carts, heavier carts even for the Rock Masters and Pro Masters uh, that'll uh, you know run the softer tire of the two MG tire compounds we run. They run the MG yellow, the soft version, the MG red medium compound. That's used for the micros, the minis, and the KAs. But more than anything, it is a hot, hot day here. We got highs here. Air temperatures expected into the uh, upper 80s. That means your track temps in the triple digits easily, and that'll be a big factor uh, when it comes to qualifying and the races as well for tire degradation and tire temperatures. Uh, them heating up, uh, from what we hear, is just as uh, you know d uh, deflating or degrading onto their lap times as it is the tire wear over the session. So one lap heats them up, overheats them, and then you're done. Yeah, especially with the, the track length as well. We're looking at a 1.2-mile circuit that's extremely technical. So uh, almost double the length of some of the other car tracks we've been to. It takes a lot of that tire out. Uh, it, like we saw the top three all banging their best lap on the first lap out. It's hard to push farther than that when you've got such a long track that's going to get heated up, hot, and wear your tires out very quickly in these high horsepower categories. Well, as they slowly clear the racetrack here from Pro and Rockmaster qualifying, we will send it away for a quick commercial break and come back with more. Another class in the books here, three down, still plenty more to get gridded for qualifying, and don't go anywhere here later on this afternoon. Two full rounds of heat races coming from King of the Castle here on Kart Chaser.
Welcome back here to Newcastle Motorsports Park for King of the Castle. The timer started for KA Junior Qualifying B. So this is the first of two classes that will be split apart for most of this weekend to try and get down to the top 40 drivers that will compete in the main event come Sunday afternoon. So first up here is a split from qualifying, the bottom half and top half after final practice yesterday. Splits the groups. You can still qualify on the pole out of the first of the two groups, the slower half, but uh, it's hard to do when you don't have any other fast drives, fast drivers around you in theory that can help, uh, especially at this racetrack, give you a bit of a tow, but more than anything, um, you know, help uh, give you a good rabbit to chase all the way around. Let's send it down here to pit lane. Alexander Searle and Caleb Vieska covering the action down on the grid, and they've caught up with OKN Stars contender Alex Stanfield, who had a good practice day yesterday. Alex? Thanks, Xander here with Alex Stanfield. Alex, pretty good practice day for you yesterday. I mean, I know you told me you were struggling a little bit, swapping back and forth from motors. You tried today today. Yeah, we found a little more stability in the engine. Uh, it's around four tenths here, I think, compared to the two engines, but we're getting really close in the vortex, and uh, every race we're getting better and better on it. Uh, but we're looking pretty strong going into qualifying today. Yeah, and I mean, with this being the second OCAN race here for the Stars Championship Series, I mean, Talk to me about the differences you've seen from Trackhouse Motorplex here in uh, Newcastle. Yeah, we're just on the red limiter so long here. It's at least like five seconds here. So it's it's a little more than GoPro, that's for sure. But um, it, it, you just got to get out of the hairpins here. That's the key thing, gearing it for the hairpins and getting as fast as you can on the straightaway. Yeah, I mean, one more thing. Talk to me about what are your confidence levels like going to qualifying? You feel like you got a good piece? Yeah, for sure. I think I think we'll be good for quality. I'm really excited to get it done. All right, thanks, Alex. Good luck. Thank you. There we go from Alex Stanfield here in qualifying. He was fast throughout the day yesterday, hovered the top three all day long. It was uh, the ending session there in warm-up with Josh Oates going quick. Brandon Carr, the championship points leader in round one winner, of course, uh, will be a threat this weekend. The Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Carr driver has had a phenomenal rookie season here in North America in his uh, U.S. debut, and it's been so impressive to watch him continue. He's been a superstar all the way through from Micro Mini and Junior. Many opportunities that's taken him from his homeland over in the United Kingdom to come race in America, but it seems like from March on, Brandon Carr has been one of the superstar talents to watch. Absolutely, and this weekend it looks like an extremely competitive field in the OKN Stars category. But moving back over to KA Junior Qualifying B, we've got the top two separating themselves by over a half second back to P3. That'll be Cole Wilson, the 821 machine in Benham Abernethy in the 827, putting down some good laps on their opening circuits. Well, that's good confidence to start things off as they head towards the green corner. There you see Benham Abernathy in that uh, Merlin uh, livery OTK. He's under the Hoach Driver Development machine. Uh, banner and uh, another pass made this lap will put him in a little better spot to start the next one they're trailing the 813 of mason coon on the mpg motorsports red and white cart republic they'll head through the dog leg and towards turns 14 and 15 to put another lap in i think benham if he didn't cost himself too much time on those passes he's caught all the way up to mason it could be a really good lap potentially a pole lap for benham abernathy but like you said simon a half second gap over the field that's a big boost to confidence because you think if you're that farther up on Group B, you'll probably get a few drivers out of Group A that won't go as fast as you do. Through the final turn, let's see it. Ben Abernathy with the passes didn't go faster, but he's in a good spot to start. Three cars back from Mason Kuhn down to turn one. He'll send it down the inside with a late move there. Gets Kuhn a little bit off guard and uh, gets over to the lead of the grouping. It'll still be a little bit tricky to get a good lap in, going ha having to go that low in a hairpin corner versus getting clear down the straightaway. But Abernathy's shown a good amount of speed. Mason Kuhn wasn't bad that lap, a 115.21. He closed the gap to only a tenth of a second off of uh, what Benham was able to do. But they need to really hook up here if they want to set a good enough lap that'll hopefully hold into the midfield of Group A. That MPG Motorsports machine of the 813 8 Mason Kuhn actually looked really strong in that last lap, put down a 115.2 with no draft out front. He led the group around. So if he can back up, get a toe, we'll see what he can put in looking strong with a minute remaining in this qualifying session. Yeah, a little bit shaky there through that section. You can see the cart kind of bunny hopping through the double left-hander, and he got a little bit of help from the rear bumper on that Lando Norris cart machine. I believe that's one of the BJR MDR entries. That is the 807 of uh, Nathan Holy. 
So through the final two turns, Kuhn has been really good. Look how much he pulled away here just in these 90 degree corners. Gets a big run onto the front straight away and he'll set up for a good lap here this time. Holy gets a 115, 53. That moves him to fourth over fourth in the grouping. But a big toe up to Benham Abernathy. This will be the final lap. They won't have enough time to get back around for another shot at it in qualifying. So it needs to be a good lap here from Mason Cohn. He needs to have, a, hopefully, a good leader in Benham Abernathy to tow him around. And if he can give him a little shove at the far side of the racetrack to push him even further forward, they might just be able to slot in inside the top 20. And that would be a really respectable effort knowing that we've got about 30 cars in uh, each group, about 20 here in Group B, and then I think we're in the mid-20s for Group A, if I'm not mistaken. Just over 40 entries, that means a few drivers won't make it through to the big show on Sunday. Not a full near 60-driver class like K.A. Senior, but that's not what you need to see, Simon. No, absolutely. Fighting in the middle of the last lap, that's certainly going to hurt Mason Kuhn as these three drivers going at it to try and get this last lap in. He looked particularly strong in these 90s to end the lap, a little bit weaker in the midsection. It was in that midsection where he was being attacked, so not sure we're going to see an improvement on this last lap. The A27 of Benham Abernathy checking out out front of this group. The three drivers behind may not improve here as they come to the checkered flag. Abernathy at the line, a 115-1. Cole Wilson, a 114-9, still holding on top. Unfortunately, Mason Kuhn can't go any quicker. Holy goes a little better. 115-41, that closes the gap in fourth. How about Nathan Dupuis on the final lap? Good run for the Canadian. He goes to P5. Ben Gaunt, six. Jackson Baldis doesn't improve. He falls to seventh. Lots of improvements on the final lap. Further back, Ryan Mort uh, improves. He goes eighth. Charlie Myers, ninth. Actually an improvement there from Baldis. He was further back on the racetrack. 115-74, doesn't change his position. Little improvement down there for Homer Hateman. He moves up to 14th. But uh, Group B qualifying in the books. Cole Wilson, the time to beat a 114.94 based off of final practice yesterday. I'd expect that we will see an improvement from that, and he will drop down the lineup. But that's the time to beat for Group A in qualifying for K.A. Jr. Again, you're seeing the drivers that maybe had some issues or maybe just weren't fast enough in final practice. So that delta of 1.5 seconds through the top 10, it will be a much closer top 10 when the upper half of the field heads out onto the racetrack. And as we come to the close, the KA Junior Qualifying B will get ready to roll out the A group, your fastest from final practice yesterday to see what they can do. Like you said, 114.94 is the mark based on those times. We should see some improvements. It's just about how much and how many at this point, Xander. Yeah, it'll take a minute to clear the racetrack. Gives us time for another word from our partners here. We come back, the upper half of K.A. Junior qualifying from the King of the Castle. You're watching Car Chaser.
So KA Junior Group A onto the circuit now and the first lap's just getting going. Lots of packs on the racetrack, lots of shuffling right now to try and get yourself in a good position here for qualifying. They'll head through that back I-70 hairpin and uh, it looks like we've got a long train of go-karts here, Simon, about probably 10 deep going back from Davin Roberts on that uh, privateer Cosmic much further down the order. He's got John Antonino Jr. on the Tesoro Raceworks CRG. But one driver that's gone out by himself all in front was a contender back in 2022. Luke Powers on the Jimmy Simpson Racing Red Speed has decided he wants to be all by his lonesome. Doesn't want to give a tow to anyone. Doesn't care to tow off of anybody else. He wants to run by himself. And for the local kid who was battling alongside his teammate Eli Warren back here uh, last year for the uh, race win, it's no surprise that he feels confident enough here to do it again. With his teammate moving up, that's uh, part of the seas for what could be a phenomenal weekend here for Luke Powers at home. The draft might be worth a couple tenths, but running out front prevents you from being in that massive line we just saw. And when you're in a line that long, it's inevitable that passes are going to be made and you probably aren't going to get the best out of every corner. So uh, a good strategy to run out here by yourself, get that first lap in, and it is a quick one to start. We're already seeing two drivers popping the best time from Group B, a 114.7 from Luke Powers out front, uh, certainly a good mark to start with here, Xander. John Antonino Jr. went around Davin Roberts that time. That's what put him at a 114.7 as well to go to second. Austin Olds on the MPG Motorsports Kart Republic. He leads that second group. He's in a very good spot. He's about fifth in line there from this group of four. You can see right pulling out of line. That's Wesley Gundler in the 846. He'll drop back to find a little better place to run and uh, slots in behind uh, these two MPG Motorsports Kart Republics. Austin Olds there in the 850, along with the 854 of Caleb Tarter. So the two of them, for, or, uh, they are third and fourth right now and locked in for what could be a really good lap as they're chasing that leading group of three, led by Antoninos to Soro Raceworks CRG. Still impressive, Luke Powers has uh, gone quickest all by himself, but I think these two could be in the catbird seat for a really, really good second lap around. Yeah, these MPG Motorsports machines on your screen right now working together, sitting at the back of this group should be a good draft. Coming through these final 90s to close the lap, we'll see what time Austin Olds can put down out front of his teammate as they approach the last in line. That'll be the 811 of Sebastian Riss, who had a good time of his own. But Austin Olds, as we were watching, puts down a 114.09. That oh, big spin there from Caleb Tarter. Half spin right behind him. He tried to follow him into the corner and just got in a little bit too hot. And now he's stalled the engine, so he's going to try and refire. That's not what you want to see. They were just starting to carve through that pack. And Caleb Tarter is currently sitting P3 with a 114.2. Again, this group going much quicker than Group B that was out before. Austin Olds currently your provisional pole sitter by just over a tenth of a second here, Xander. Yeah, that 114.97 right now, it's continuously getting shuffled down the order. Packs further back, even going a little bit faster. The whole top uh, 12 in the 114 second bracket. Austin Olds a 14 flat. He's caught up to this group with Antonino and Davin Roberts. Davin Roberts, one of the youngest drivers on the grid, had to get an age waiver even last year to move up early. Uh, only 10 years old in that Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Kart. And uh, he currently leads this group of three. Went back around Antonino. He is fourth right now at a 14 37. Let's see what this lap looks like for Davin Roberts and John Antonino along with Austin Olds who made a pass at the beginning at the line. Olds goes a little quicker. How about Luke Powers? Still by himself. Still quickest. The 114.05. Luke Powers on the JSR Red Speed by himself. Look at the gap there. Nobody in sight and he goes to the pole. I'm a big fan of his strategy. No one there to, to mess up any of his laps. He can work on a clean qualifying session, just pushing his own personal performance uh, as each lap ticks off, and he'll get it by about five thousandths of a second currently over the 850 MPG machine of Austin Olds. Well, let's send it on down here, trackside to the pit lane while we keep the uh, action on the screen. Alexander Searles caught up with uh, last year's Rockstars champion and third in the Pro Stars division. Josh Conker from the Vermont Con Car uh, Cart Company had a decent day yesterday. He's standing by. Up and down in practice. Seems to be just missing a little bit on pace. I mean, you guys have uh, done anything overnight to uh, fix that? Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of my driving and a lot of me, like, mentally-wise. 
Um, I just wasn't totally there yesterday and struggling with that. So uh, we went back last night, reset, kind of worked on some things, you know, with myself with the go-kart. And uh, looking better this morning. Unfortunately, got held up some laps after breaking in. But, um, yeah, a lot better for sure than, uh, than yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I know you guys were here uh, since Tuesday setting up. Been on track quite a bit for you. What, what's the track evolution been like? What have you noticed? Uh, it's been a lot different than it was last year here. It's been a little more kind of like Scusa was, where it was pretty greasy. It's a lot warmer as well than it was last year. So uh, just trying to tune the chassis to the different track conditions and to the heat that we're experiencing this weekend. Thanks, Josh. Good luck. Oh, thank you very much. Good to hear from uh, Josh Conker, and again here in the track conditions, significantly different uh, this weekend. So that's good to hear. It's leveled the playing field quite a bit. Now the checkered flag has just come out here in Group A qualifying. They've broken to the 113s. Powers a 13-6, uh, and more drivers have jumped up into that mix as they were p uh, shuffling further back. He's going for one more. This could be really, really good for Luke Powers and put a big exclamation point on his performance in qualifying. Three corners to go on that Jimmy Simpson Racing Red Speed. That red speed machine going quick all by himself over two tenths to the good of P2 of Ayr Ayrton Grimm currently in that 822 machine. So running all by himself, no draft, just putting personal performance out front. He'll set a new personal best on that last lap by. But John Antonino clicks off two thousandths of a second. We'll take him to P1. It's a close top three here, Xander. Yeah, big improvement from John Antonino on that black and orange to Sorrel Raceworks CRG. A 13.55, half a tenth better. Austin Olds also followed him forward, jumps back up to third, moves Ayrton Grimm and company back to fourth. Now, uh, that time by, I think they were the last ones to get the checkered flag, so it locks it in. John Antonino stuns him in qualifying with a good final lap. And the Tesoro Raceworks CRG driver will lead your field to the green over Powers, Olds, Ayrton Grimm, Cade Yeager rounds the top five. Davin Roberts fell back down to six. Ethan Tovo, rookie in seventh. Then you look further back, Sebastian Rice there. Uh, he was uh, up a little bit in that group to start. He falls to 11th. Wesley Gundler was there. He t uh, ends up 12th. Caleb Tartar, unfortunately, just shuffled down the order. He ends up down in 14th. And that la uh, lap time from the uh, slower group of 14.9. Unfortunately, it, it's really only end up going to beat one driver. That's Indy Anderson, who didn't have an ideal qualifying on that TKG Kart Republic. So 22nd for our quick time driver from Group B. But for Group A, that's a blistering pace there for the first couple drivers and a perfectly timed buzzer beater lap for John Antonino. He'll lead the field of the green and heat one later this afternoon. Luke Powers alongside Austin Olds in third, Ayrton Grimm in fourth, Cade Yeager fifth. Four different manufacturers and four different teams represented inside the top four for qualifying. And Cade Jr. is always great to see. More to come here. Qualifying continues to roll live from King of the Castle here on Car Chaser. Welcome to Ohio Kart Parts, the Midwest's largest Burrell Art racing go-kart dealer. We carry Burrell Art, Daniel Ricardo, Charles Leclerc, and Robert Kubica brand of go-karts, as well as parts from names you trust. Chassis components from Freeline, engines from IAMI, Briggs & Stratton, and soon-to-be Tillotson, electronics from AIM Technologies, MG Tires, Taika Axles, seating from Tillet, Arai Helmets, and 3 tenths race products. Visit us online at www.ohiocartparts.com, at our facility in Lorain, Ohio, or at the local track on race weekends. If we don't have it, call us at 440-628-CART. That's 5278. And we will do what we can to help you out.
Welcome back here to the Stars Championship Series. King of the Castle as qualifying gets underway now for the Mini Swift Division. On your screen is the Marsha Motorsports 114 of Cameron Marsha as uh, one of the many privateer entries here this weekend leads uh, a couple through the final two turns. He's got Landon Boer right behind him on that MPG Motorsports red and white Kurt Republic. And they'll cross the line uh, with 5 minutes and 25 seconds remaining to start lap number one. Then there's Jaime Garcia there, the leader of that pack of four behind them. Uh, on the Parallel machine, you've got Jacob Scheibley in that group pack of five. Sorry, Isaac Malkut is in that mix there on the 150, or Holden Harder, sorry, in that 157. Malkut up into junior, so used to that kid being in the mini division over the last two seasons and being one of the initial superstars to come out of the Stars Championship Series as the inaugural champion of micro, then champion again and champion in mini the following year. In that mix as well there is, uh, I believe, Grady Kronick uh, along with uh, a few more, so... We'll keep an eye on who goes quickest here in this session. The entire group on the circuit for Swift Stars and a pack a little bit further back. If we go all the way down back to turn number one, you will find Lucas Palacio, Travis Pettit, Kai Mars, a bunch of Trinity Karting Group Kart Republic machines that waited till the uh, full main group went out about 30 seconds up the road. So for Swift Stars qualifying, these drivers on screen, Cameron Marsha and Landon Boer, they'll get the full distance and probably get at least four, if not five laps. The, uh, this group right here electing to go out at the rear. They're only going to get three, maybe four. It's, uh, again, Palacio in tow, Pettit, and then Kai Mars, and then Tyrone Kemper Jr., fourth in that train on that uh, AK team race, uh, AKT Racing Team livery energy. So with this group, half a lap back. Certainly some of the drivers will be, will be looking out for to go towards the top of this session, but going out back, they are running thin on time. A short qualifying session with a long track, it's going to – lose probably a lap for them compared to the guys that went out out front but currently William Roberts in the 189 machine leads Landon Muir in the early stages of this qualifying session with just over three and a half minutes remaining Xander. Here's uh, the next group to come Lucas Palacio, Travis Pettit in line through the final corner let's see what they hit on the opening lap they'll quickly all four go top of the leaderboard Pettit a uh, 117.53 Palacio Towing him around goes uh, third. Kai Mars goes uh, second. And Tyrone Kemper Jr., big bobble there out of the la uh, second corner. You're going all the way to the limit and kicking up some dirt here, Simon. Yeah, certainly pushing to stay with this group. We'll see another off in a different group. That'll be the 300 machine. That was Jaime Garcia right there going off in front of that pack. He's got them going through the uh, final couple turns. So there goes Kemper up the hill. We've got our focus right now on Lucas Palacio and Travis Pettit. Palacio has had a banner year so far. You could not have scripted the first five months really better for Lucas Palacio in what will be uh, probably his final season stateside of the mini division, but still only nine years old. Plenty of time if you wanted to run all the way up to the 12-year age bracket. He's technically on the younger end, jumped in very early to the mini class uh, and uh, the micro division as well. He's always been one of the younger drivers, one of the smaller drivers in the field. He's earned a lot of respect over the course of the last two seasons, and this year he has been the kid to beat everywhere we've gone. And right now I think everyone's got their stopwatches on him when they roll out on Friday practice, and rightfully so. Across the line, he'll set the pole time. 116-76, Palacio to the hot seat as they head to 1-2. and two. Palacio driving well beyond his years at that young age. He and the Trinity Karting Group taking off, going out in the back, seeming, seeming to work so far as they are uh, putting up some quick times. Only two drivers in the 1 minute 16 second bracket. Palacio currently sitting P1 with Pettit following closely in tow. And they're making the most of the session so far with just over a minute and a half remaining. May get one more lap here, Xander. Yeah, we'll see if we can get one more lap around for them. Uh, with uh, just a minute 30 left, it'll be two more laps to everybody else as laps three start to cycle on in. Gabriel Belog on the 187. Magic Kart checkered motorsports machine. He goes third. Landon Boer uh, goes up to fourth. And Cameron Marsha moves up into that fifth spot. So that's that group further back. And this is going to hurt them here on the second to last lap. Palacio taking a look back, knows it. He's trying to help and bring uh, Pettit on through. It's going to split them up as that 117 and Nicholas uh, Les uh, Lassiter uh, ends up just a little bit in the way on the Charles Leclerc cart. That'll split them apart for the final lap, so they may not even be able to take much advantage of it. Their second lap still holds at a 116.76 right now, still by 
three tenths back to Gabriel Belong, so they might be fine with that uh, second lap around the circuit they were able to put in. Tyrone Kemper Jr. that time improved. He moved up to ninth as he went by. Kai Mars did not. They're going to catch the traffic of Nicholas Lesseter, uh, who sits down in the 19th spot this time, so that will hurt them a little bit, but 40 seconds to go. Let's switch shift over here. If we go to the final couple turns, we'll see that uh, first pack coming through and who's going to get it in uh, to go another lap before the checkered flag flies. Mar Mars trying to back off, find a little better place behind Lesseter. Here comes that first group across the line. So Cameron Marshall with 10 seconds to go. He'll get another lap with Landon Boer helping him across the line. Down to turn number one. They did not improve last time. They need more here this time. They've got one more shot at it. My driver to watch coming through this last lap is going to be Travis Pettit with a big gap created by that uh, slower driver in the middle of them. He's going to have a massive toe up to Lucas Palacio. The question is, can he execute on that? We'll see as he comes across the line to close the lap. Checkered flag in the air. Jackson Tovo jumps up to the sixth spot on the 133 machine with a good lap. Here comes this group across the line. Like you said, a big gap to start it. It's a small gap to end it. Could this be the lap for Travis Pettit at the line? Not enough there as Palacio slowed down and Pettit could not go quick enough. A 117-2 to his 116.9. Three tenths off the top two on in. Gabriel Belog needs four and a half tenths to find to try and jump up the order. Still waiting. There goes Kai Mars on by. He'll clock into seventh at best that time by. William Roberts, eighth, holding harder in the ninth spot as they uh, roll on through. J uh, let's see the final couple. Landon Boer, Cameron Marsha still on the backside of the racetrack. Across the line, that was uh, Jude Theramol, uh, Mulsa Warney. Uh, in 17th, Anna McCrone, 20th. Here comes those two. Marsha on the final lap to third at a 117.3. Belog moves him back, and Gabriel Belog goes back to the inside of row two. Marsha goes fourth. Landon Boer ends up in fifth as they all drop their times to low 117s. But what a performance from Lucas Palacio, Travis Pettit, the Trinity Carding Group uh, camp pull off another pole award. They've swept now Micro and Mini with Emerson Lane and Micro, Mini Swift for them here as well with Palacio and Pettit and they're the only two drivers to get into that 116 second bracket. So how about that for the uh, team based out of the Motorsports Country Club of Cincinnati here for round two of the championship. They've still got their home race coming up but it feels like a home race for them here with the runs they've got so far in the cadet divisions. And it'll be on the laurels of their superstars in KA stars and pro stars as well with the likes of Gavin Bailiff on that black diamond Carbonado uh, chassis to try and go to the top of the leaderboard there. He's got a hefty class in front of him, though, with Tim Traeger uh, coming over on the SRP factory team Marinello. And A.J. Myers, a late entry as the factory magic car driver and former multi-time Pro Shifter National Champion. They'll be lining up later on this afternoon, but Mini Swift now completed here with qualifying. More to come on Car Chaser. Oh, sorry. Well, actually, as well, here, one quick interview before we send it away. Let's go ahead and send it on down to the grid for some of our KA stars. We've got a handful with Caleb Viesca on pit lane. Caleb? I'm here uh, trackside with Emery Lida and Dalton Haynes looking really good with these new suits. Uh, Emery, start with you first. Emery, seems like your warm-up was really good. You went P1. You were fastest overall. Um, how's your weekend been going thus far? Yeah, it's been a pretty good weekend so far. I mean, warm-up was probably our best session yet. We've had good pace, but I think ultimately we're trying to find the right balance between getting a good draft and also being able to find the right speed through the corners. Thank you, Emery. And next lead to Dalton Haynes here. Uh, Dalton, seems like you struggled a little bit in, uh, in the warm-up this morning. Um, you were telling me you were sandbagging, um, but what do you think your plan is going into, into qualifying, and what, do you, uh, what difficulties do you think you're going to face for qualifying? I mean, I think the only real difficulty is just not getting into too big of a pack and fighting. I've, I've been fast all weekend by myself. Uh, my game plan prop most likely will be go by myself, but if I catch someone, I catch someone and I get a draft. But if not, I really just want to focus on driving and getting, getting a good lap in, you know? I mean, I've always been fast without a draft here, so I'm, I'm excited. All right, thank you, guys. Back to you, Xander. Thank you, Caleb, there again. Cool to see for uh, Emery Lida and Dalton Haynes. We've seen them on broadcast before. We've hung out with them away from the racetrack and uh, getting back after it. Dalton Haynes looked very fast yesterday. One of the practice sessions carved his way up through the lead pack in a couple of laps, dropped back, played around again, and then pulled on in. I know he's got a lot of confidence on that Cart Republic machine 
another one of the many privateers, one of the cool parts of the Stars Championship Series. We've got obviously some powerhouses like the Trinity Carding Group sweeping the top of the board in Mini and Micro Stars, but still just as much the beauty of uh, national level and pro level carding still. If you want to run the package those guys are running, you could buy it off the showroom floor and go work out of a pickup truck yourself. Dalton Haynes, his brother Roman, sleeping here in the back of their pickup truck on an air mattress here this weekend and competing on the latest budget they can. They're competitive in KA Stars. They've got the Group B on the racetrack. That's why those guys are down on the grid. They'll be up next. This is the bottom half from final practice out of 57 total entries here this weekend. Only the best 40 get to start the big dance on Sunday afternoon, though. That means we'll be looking at a pretty heavy LCQ battle uh, come Sunday morning. But currently, it's all about what they can do now. How can they separate themselves in this qualifying session? This Group B going to be looking for everything they can. And this is the 964 machine going around early. Cameron Estes losing it on his outlap. We'll see a, a lot of drivers. We've got 26 on track in this Group B. So they'll get themselves sorted out, and they'll be coming around to close out their first time laps with four and a half minutes remaining in this session. So let's see as uh, this group uh, is uh, loosely tied together, headed down the short chute towards uh, turns uh, 14, 15, and 16. That's that scale tower turn. And then over onto the uh, final two corners in the front straightaway. The first laps to come on by, 27 drivers here. A 57 driver entry list. Seamus McKendry sets the marker of 14.85. That'll get bested by Tanner Bunny. That'll get bested by local superstar Addison Ionello in the 946. Spit it out of one of the garages here at Newcastle Motorsports Park. And Addison right there by herself on that bright yellow helmet and black suit, the 946, fifth in line. And uh, she's, I think, in a really good spot to run down that group, potentially get a little bit of the benefit of the toe, uh, but looking fast with some clear racetrack for her right now. Definitely a strong opening lap without the draft. So as she closes on, to this next group, we'll look to see the lap times improve at 14, 485, her best lap so far on lap one. But in some of these categories, uh, KA Junior, no exception, will be looking for fast laps, clicking off near the end of the se session. Lap four, lap five uh, should see some improvements as they will work for the draft to improve constantly throughout the session. She's caught this group in the midsection of this track, so I'm not sure she's actually going to improve on this lap as she ran them down a, probably a little bit more quickly than she was expecting here, Xander. Yeah, that was a big gap gain for Addison Ionello. She's still a car length away, but probably going to have to breathe the throttle a little bit through these final couple turns as they stack them and pack them. Let's see what the lap looks like for the young lady on the 946 OTK CRP racing machine across the line for Addison. It will be good enough for the pole for about a split second. Garrett Davis right behind her on the 937. That gray and blue suit goes to the top. A 1372 on the Fernando Alonso chassis. Garrett Davis, your new top qualifier here in Group B by four and a half tenths of a second over Grant Vogel. Ionello, Seth Stowe on the Timmy Tech comp cart. And, cart, and then uh, Logan Mueller's TKG Cart Republic down in fifth. And that's a big lap to put out on lap two here for Garrett Davis, Grant Vogel's currently sitting in P2. It's a close battle between two and three, but like you said, that's four and a half tenths to the clear for Garrett Davis on lap two of the session. Who's going to get the draft? Who's going to set the laps here at the end? It'll all be told in the next two and a half minutes, Xander. Yeah, double pass in there in that cell tower. Turn number 11, hairpin. Ionello going by the 975 LN card, I believe. That is uh, down the order a little bit. Uh, and uh, as well, uh, it's Garrett Davis going on by one of, uh, as they start to carve through the pack. So I'll hurt their laps just a smidge here on this time. That was the 975 at Tanner Bunny on that BJR MDR machine through the final couple turns. Davis going to try and find a way around him. And uh, if he can get himself past Tanner Bunny and follow off Ionello, it could be a good lap. But that lap obviously mired in traffic. Not going to go any better as they get a little bit together up just up the road. Brennan Schubert there on the TFR Kurt Republic. Uh, right uh, there is uh, Sesto. They were side by side as Schubert and one more well, went through the dog leg. I think we're going to see that a lot though here, Simon. The drivers get the toe, get a big run out of the final turn, start to show the nose down the front stretch, but the line takes you to apex that dog leg and you may not know a guy's on your inside if they're just at their rear tire. Yeah, the dog leg's going to make it very interesting running down to the end of the straight towards turn one. Normally in reverse, you're getting that toe out of the corner. It's not much of an issue, but as you get that draft towards the corner, it tightens up. Uh, bends a little bit to the right, so it's going to be a clashing point throughout the weekend, I would expect. Another move, Garrett Davis 
moving his way through, trying to get himself some clean track with just 55 seconds remaining in the session. He might get one more, or this might be the end. Not sure yet, Xander. Yeah, good lap there for uh, Davis to at least clear through, but he still, like you said, got two more cars up the road from him. I believe that's Presley Whitney in the 987 Tony cart behind Brenna Schubert's uh, TFR Cart Republic. Uh, we've gonna go, we're going to go down track side here, side by side with 30 seconds to go. Alexander Searles cut up with our championship points leader. Brandon Carr set for qualifying and OKN Stars coming up. Alex? Thanks, Xander. Brandon Carr. Brandon, solid day for you yesterday. I mean, you've been out of the seat for three weeks, haven't been to this racetrack. Talk to me about your day. Yeah, today we just um, start off, started off good. A couple of mistakes that I just need to clean up in my part. But I think we'll be fine. Just got to keep pushing and learn the track as quick as we can and just get out front and get going. Yeah, I mean, you say you learned the track. First time here. Uh, draft's huge, right? We talked about it at a track house. A little bit of arrow wash there. How bad is it here with arrow wash following somebody? I think it's pretty. It's a bit worse than that track house because um, the track's a lot faster, so you're going faster around the corners. And um, I think it's just something else to get used to, really. You'll get used to it, but just got the first person to saw it out will be the quickest. Yeah, I mean, you're lacking a few tenths there in practice yesterday. You told me it was really just the draft. You, but you're telling me right now with the air wash being so difficult, would you rather be ahead of somebody or following going to qualifying? It's kind of a it, kind of a hard thing to say because you lose that much in the toe. It's not something you'd gain if you was out front with the air wash and stuff. So it's kind of a one or the other. You, if you're better out of like out front and trying to get going, that's good. But if you're better behind, you've just got to watch the air wash and see how it goes. But it'll be one of them races. I think it'll be a lot closer race this weekend, and um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Thank you. There you go from Brandon Carr. As the checkered flag flies here for Group B qualifying, Garrett Davis is 1372. Will hold. Grant Vogel improved on lap number five. He went to second. Good lap from James Brassel as well, one of the drivers moving up from the 206 division into KA Stars. He goes 13th or uh, to third. Logan Mueller moves up into fourth by the end. Micah Colbert into fifth. Ben Lai to sixth. Addison Ionello drops to seventh. Seamus McKendry, 8th. Seth Stowe, ninth. Carson Sauter rounds out the top 10. Uh, the time to beat for KA Stars Group A qualifying will be a 113.72. And there's your spread, 8 tenths for the top 10 from Garrett Davis on that Fernando Alonso cart all the way down to a 114.52 for Carson Sauter. 8 tenths off uh, the pace there. So you go further back here from the top 10 in Group B qualifying. You'll find, of course, Tanner Bunny there on that BJR MDR LN card. He ended 11th. Hudson Potter in 12th. Liam Kerper, Chris Harroward, Jake James 15th. Presley Whitney was on our screen quite a bit. He ends up down in 16th along with Brenna Schubert in 17th. Cameron Estes, 18th. Daniel Isaacs, 19th. Michael Mastandria in the 20th position here at the end qualifying. Then you got Kyle Raymond, Jake Phillips, Peyton Klein, Eric Goldstein, Noah Fawner, Paul Fast, uh, Castle, and Eli Fox. He's had a frustrating weekend there in the 918. Uh, unfortunately, not where he'd like to start. Going tail end Charlie for both heat races. He got one lap in at a quarter speed. So the 918 of Eli Fox, he was one of the top five, top 10 drivers over the last two years at the Cup Cards North America Grand Nationals for the 206 national level racing. That, of course, the nine horsepower four stroke motor. Then you move, he moves up here to the 22 horsepower KA Stars division, loaded with talent. And I think he'll drop in just fine, but his work is cut out for him when you qualify 57th overall here, Simon. He's definitely going to have to fight his way forward, try and not sit in that LCQ after today's round of heats. Uh, but when we come back, we'll have the quick group, group A of KA Stars coming right back at you after this short break.
I'm Billy Vincent, owner of MPG Motorsports. What we do at MPG is we try to keep it a, a nice, fun family atmosphere, uh, try to combine sort of the, the bigger things and the, of the bigger teams and the professionalism down with sort of some of the fun sort of family-oriented uh, atmosphere. We try to not only develop drivers, but also the parents and the families um, for just the knowledge in general in motorsports. It all starts in karting. What we try to do is, is try to help the drivers, the moms, the dads understand the sport of motorsports in general, not just karting, but what it takes to get all the way up through. Uh, whether you end up wanting to be a driver or a mechanic or an engineer, you know, we can help you with that, and that's what we're here for. If you're interested in joining us at MPG, our home base is at Whiteland Raceway Park in Indianapolis, and you can contact us at info at willpowercart.com, and one of our great people will reach out to you, and, and we'll try to put the best program together. Welcome back here to Newcastle Motorsports Park for King of the Castle qualifying in KA Stars underway. The first of the triple header uh, headline st uh, superstar divisions we've got. This is the first on the ladder. Then you move from here to a tw uh, from a 22 horsepower motor to a near 40 horsepower OKN Stars uh, engine, and then a 45 plus horsepower KZ Pro Star gearbox class as well. The OKN Stars will be up uh, up at the end of the order. Pro Stars currently on deck. Mick Gabriel on your screen in that AEM Karting Cosmic. He was quickest by three tenths in Friday happy hour. However, we have seen this story before. He was the fastest driver at the end of the day Friday or uh, Thursday for night practice at the night fight at Trackhouse Motorplex and then was kind of struggling just about a fifth to tenth place car the rest of the weekend. So let's see if Mick Gabriel can convert that practice speed that he had back at round one and has again here at round two into a top qualifying run here uh, for King of the Castle. The first lap looks good for Mick. Uh, 112.95 at a track he calls home. And Josh Campbell uh, running double duty this week. He's got a busy schedule. I believe Campbell in both OKN and KA Stars. So he'll be busy and uh, definitely getting a full workout at Newcastle Motorsports Park. He goes second. Make that third. Make that fourth. James Overbeck and Emerson Reed going to throw some initial quick times. They'll go to second and third. A strong opening lap for Mick Gabriel at 12.95. First set. First driver in the minute 12 second bracket puts him five tenths of a second quicker than James Overbeck, but it is only the outlap. So as these drivers get up to speed, they look for lap two, three, four to be the strong ones. We'll see if Mick Gabriel's time can hold on here, Xander. Yeah, Gabriel threw the dog leg and uh, then the short shoot over here. Sorry, through the horseshoe and then to the, the short shoot through turns 15, 16, 17, 18. Now this will be a better read with uh, two laps at full song across the line for Mick Gabriel uh, through the final turn down the front straightaway here in K Stars qualifying A, a 1286 goes a little better. The rest of the group coming by now. Let's start to see them shuffle. Josh Campbell, 13-3, he goes second. Lucas Zabo jumps into the top five with a 13.5. Still about a half second to find. Gabriel looking really racy here in qualifying. Campbell getting around Sam Avrutsky there in the 924, but Mick Gabriel We'll wait and see if anything else shuffles. Emerson Reed still yet to get his second lap on in. There it is. He'll go fifth. Overbeck to third. Gabriel, my goodness, is he moving here in qualifying. A <laughs> strong first two laps from Mick Gabriel by himself, putting up two minute 12 on repeat. And that'll put him well clear of P2. He's still the only driver in the minute 12 second bracket. And another driver moved up on that last lap. The 941 machine, Emery Lida, putting in a 13.5. 35 will secure fourth place so far with just over two minutes remaining in this KA Stars qualifying Group A. Yeah, a couple of host driver development. Tony Carts are fourth and sixth right now. Light on the 941. Emerson Reed right up the road ahead of him. Next car in line on the 988. They, uh, he sits six right behind Finnegan Bailiff on that Trinity Carting Group Green and White Cart Republic. Here's Dalton Haynes there trying to move up the order. He's in a decent spot right now in the 922. Hasn't really made any noise yet here in qualifying. He sits down in 21st. Let's see what Haynes can do this time by the stripe. Dalton Haynes across the line. Third, a 113-128. And they're closing the gap to quick Mick Gabriel. He's stabilized at a 112.8, 112.9 while the field is getting a little bit faster. So Dalton Haynes now lining up behind Eli Warren. Uh, the uh, superstar kid who was in KA Junior last year and is now only in his second KA Senior start, cracking the top 10, top 15 at Trackhouse Motorplex. He's on that Jimmy Simpson Racing Red Speed machine up the road from Dalton Haynes. Let's go down to pit lane as well for a little bit of intel. A.J. Myers is standing by here with Alexander Searle. Alex? 
Thanks, Xander. Are you with Talon? Yawk will actually Talon. If you yesterday, struggled a little bit for pace. This morning, though, came out like a rocket. P1 there, a warm-up. What did you guys find uh, from yesterday to today? Uh, after the final practice yesterday, we did a track walk, and I just learned a few things by what AJ was just showing us on the track. And then we just discussed what I was doing wrong while we were just hanging out last night. I put it all together. I said, I'm going to try to gain seven tenths, and I did exactly that. Pretty happy with it, and we're going to try to repeat the same thing as warm-up this morning. Yeah, I mean, I talked to Josh earlier today. He said track's a little bit greasy, more than the, what it was last year. Have you guys noticed the same thing, and how do you feel on new tires? Uh, yeah, I definitely noticed that it's a little bit greasier and definitely hotter than last year. Um, we just adjusted by tire pressures. The tire pressures have been a little bit finicky this time around, but we're figuring it out, and we're getting grip. Like, we're just learning as we go. Thanks, Talon. Good luck. Thank you. All right, there was Talon Yockel. Now, big lap that time. Just about popped me and Simon's eyes out of our head. How about James Overbeck on the Brandon Jarsacrack Racing Mike Doty Racing Camp? He goes to the top by two full tenths, a 112.59. Towed that time off Emery Lida. He'll go by him there in the scoreboard. Unfortunately, that'll hurt Lida's time. He went to second there on the Hotz DD Cart Chasers suit, Tony Cart. So it's a front row lockout for these two right now, and Overbeck might even go a little better this time with the pass. But there still is that final buzzer beater opportunity for everybody right now as the checkered flag will fly this time. Everyone in this group has gotten quicker as the session's gone on, except for Mick Gabriel, who was fast out of the gate. He's dropped to third. Reif Shaw up to fourth. Bailiff fifth. Lucas Zabo is sixth. He clocks in there at the checkered. Eli Warren goes third here at the checkered flag. Dalton Haynes closely follows him. Slot it into P5 with another 112.93. So we went from only having one driver in the minute 12 second bracket to seven. You make that eight in the last couple of laps here. Mick Gabriel was happy with his time. He pulls it off early, only does three laps on the session. He'll fall ultimately to six places. James Overbeck takes your top spot. But the field cycling through a lot of minute 12.8s. Emerson Reed improving. We have... What is that? Six, four, five drivers in the minute 12.8 second bracket. So the end of the session becoming increasingly tight as we see a fight for the top step of this KA Stars qualifying session. It'll be an all out bare knuckle brawl with just two tenths from second down to eighth. And we know that Overbeck, while he's really fast, obviously, as he ends up with the pole, got a bit of help towing off the rear bumper of Emery Lida to finish that lap off. So James Overbeck. His first career KA Stars Pole Award in a 57 driver field at Newcastle Motorsports Park. The CKNA Grand Nationals 206 Junior uh, Champion and I believe multi-times 206 Senior National winner is still looking for that first career KA Stars podium and main event win. It could come here at Newcastle Motorsports Park, a track that has seen so much success for him. Emery Lida, a veteran in the class, still looking for that first national win. He'll line up on the outside of the front row with his best qualifying effort in the Stars Championship Series. Eli Warren, the rookie in third. Emerson Reed, the veteran on his return to the sport over the last year and a half. An impressive run to put two Hoats driver development Tony Carts in the top five. He ends fourth. Finnegan Bailiffs, Trinity Carding Group, Kurt Republic rounds out the top five. So that's the marker for his younger brother Gavin here in the Pro Stars class to try and get better. Gabriel six, Dalton Haynes seventh, Rife Shaw in eighth on the BJR MDR camp. And then Lucas Zabo ninth on the RPM Tony Cart. Dominic Tesoro, a good one, another veteran driver in KA Stars. And that Tesoro Raceworks CRG, one of his better qualifying efforts over his partial schedule the last few years. He ends up out, uh, just inside the top 10. And then Oliver Piatek on down Drew James, Josh Campbell, Tristan Farber, all with really good times there to go inside the top 15. Spencer Conrad closes that group off. We're gonna stay commercial free here through these next couple sessions because this one is all gonna be about the front end of it from what we've seen, Simon. I would not imagine more than half the field to run past lap number two. Now in our fastest class on track this week and your pro stars taking to the track for their first couple laps of their only qualifying session of the weekend. What we saw in the pro masters earlier was a quick opening couple of laps and then not much improvement after that with this high horsepower, high degradation, long track. So we'll see how they can do. AJ Myers on your screen currently 
Uh, it's it's going to be a dash to get those good laps in early here, Xander. Yeah, well, there was, of course, a lot of moving and shaking in silly season time, both coming into the star season and from round one to round number two. We have our championship uh, winner, the number one plate from last year, Vincenzo Saracino, making the move to the Vermont Kart Company, Marinello, heading into the year. was still on his uh, independent uh, TV kart operation for most of the uh, the Winter Tour era. Josh Conker on the number three plate. All moved over to them midsummer last year. AJ Myers, a last minute entry here, and it's a new motor builder for the Magic Kart USA camp as well, as the SRP engines and Magic Kart uh, combination has gone their separate ways. There's now the SRP factory team that's fielding Tim Traeger aboard a Marinello chassis, along with support for the Kartworks racing team with Justin White and Chris Verino. Uh, on uh, Marinello chassis as well. So you've got red and yellow Marinellos, a flurry of them, and A.J. Myers and Talon Yaka leading the way on the Magic Cards. Problems for Ayrton Hernandez, unfortunately. He went up and over the berm over in turn number two to start his first lap. So that leading edge motorsports FK chassis will need to get back onto the circuit and try to clean those tires off very quickly if he wants a good lap. Now certainly a tough break to start qualifying for him as we will probably see a bunch of good laps coming in early not expecting a whole lot at the end of the session so these first couple laps are going to be key Vincenzo Saracino on your screen now will come by for his first time by drops a wheel off on the exit pushing for everything it has and he'll slot into P2 on the first time by Josh Conker right behind him teammate in the 203 machine will put it at a 107.44 three tenths uh margin to pole and just behind Justin White and Max Hewitt clocking their laps also at 107.7 so three drivers in the one minute point seven bracket and Colin Daly just crossing the line and that number 227 machine will put it on provisional pole with the 107.297 here Xander. How about that for the flying Jamaican Colin Daly on that DR North America factory DR cart a 107.29 puts him a tenth and a half better than uh, Rockstar's uh, champ and third in the Pro Stars class, the number three plate holder, Josh Conker. White again, uh, third there on the Cartworks machine. Max Hewitt on that SRP factory team. Marinello, his debut on that go-kart and that race team and that engine uh, package uh, being built by the SRP camp. So all new for Max Hewitt. He ends fi or goes fifth on the opening lap. And Gavin Bailiff on that Black Diamond Carbonado Trinity Karting Group machine, third on the opening lap. A 107.66. Conquer lap two will be a little bit better problems for Tim Troger by the way the 207 was half a second clear in practice number four on the field he has not turned a lap yet here in qualifying I don't know if he's on the racetrack it's the 207 Marinello but this is not good news for the SRP factory team driver Tim Troger uh, the European making his first ever American start and in the Pro Stars class, it's not looking so hot for him here with no laps turned yet in qualifying. Daly's uh, going to stay the same on lap two. Doesn't go better. A.J. Myers, welcome to the party. He'll take the Magic guys to the top of the board. And as I was just about to say, the Magic Kart Camp struggling to start the session early. All three of their drivers slamming through awesome times. P1, 2, and 4 currently in the session. A 106.40. That's five tenths clear of his teammate Talon Yakel in the 106.99 range currently. Yeah, how about that from A.J. Myers in the 202 Magic Kart Machine. Six tenths clear on the field. Brings Talon Yakel up to the point to go to second. Annie Rule into fourth going by Michael Riccio with a good lap as well. He goes into the top five. Moves Bailiff back to the sixth spot. Colin Daly is the only one that split up the white, blue, and orange of the Magic Kart camp. So here's Annie Rule on your screen. One of the smallest drivers in the field. Young lady right now, again, sitting in fourth as they head down to turn number 15. Riccio, I believe, is the driver right behind her on the 219 machine. And across the line for their uh, second lap at full speed, third lap uh, on the loop. Let's see if there's any other movers and shakers. We saw A.J. Myers pull off. He did his one lap. He's good with it. He'll sit on it. Daly went a little better. Tim Troger, there goes his first lap on the four, or 207. He'll go to P2 and eight hundredths off of A.J. Myers. What a lap there from Tim Troger. <laughs> With a half second gap from P1 to P2, he manages to close that down to nine hundredths, slotting that number 207 machine into provisionally P2 with just over a minute remaining in this Pro Stars qualifying session. And he's going for more here, Simon. Tim Droger looks to be still on a push lap, so the SRP factory team, Marinello, wants a little bit more. He'd love 
to go to the pole in his American start, his American debut here with the Stars Championship Series into the cell tower hairpin. Traffic up the road, a little bit far enough away. I think it should be safe as he goes through the uh, double left horseshoe. That's Cameron Reed on her Pro Shifter National debut. No, into the scale line and done. Tro uh, Troger gonna sit on that lap. It'll put him on the front row for now. 40 seconds to go, about a good chunk of the field that pulled in early. Reed was going for more. Saracino, their bottom of your screen. Annie Rule, their top of the hill. She's pulled in. Saracino, he's on a cool down lap on that Vermont, Vermont Cart Company machine for the number one plate, all the way down to fifth on the order and eight tenths to find for Vincenzo Saracino. Gavin Bailiff that time, lap four is better. He'll move, uh, stay in third and close that gap a little bit to Troger and Myers at a 106.98. And the unique thing about running these high deg, high horsepower classes is that you get that one lap, you know it feels good, and immediately after, you know that that's it. That's the peak of the tire. We can't do any more. As you see, the drivers start to pull, pull off even before the checkered's thrown. A.J. Myers only throwing in two laps. Tim Troger only putting in two laps. So it's a very defined peak and a very sharp fall off afterwards. They hit that time, they know it's good, and they pull it right into the pits as we're starting to see the checkered flag fly on this Pro Stars category. A.J. Myers, your current pole sitter ahead of Tim Troger, Gavin Bailiff slotting into P3, Talon Yackel P4, and Vincenzo Saracino repping that number one plate will round out your current top five as we see the checkered flag displayed here, Xander. Checkered flag displayed. Time has hit zero, and that will conclude Pro Stars qualifying. A.J. Myers, the captain of the Magic Cart Brigade, will put them on top. Tim Troger on the SRP Factory Team. Marinello second. Gavin Bailiff on the Black Diamond Carbonado Trinity Karting Group entry third. Talon Yockel fourth. Vincenzo Saracino, the reigning champ, stays up with his consistent run as we saw back at Trackhouse uh, to go into the top five. Colin Daly sixth on the DR North America entry. Annie Rule, Michael Riccio, Justin White, and Josh Conker all the way down to 10th here in Pro Stars qualifying. So that will conclude that division. We move now from Pro Stars and Rock Stars to OKN Stars to close out qualifying. One more class to go. It's coming your way here on Car Chaser next. And welcome back here to King of the Castle at Newcastle Motorsports Park. Round two of the Stars Championship Series. OKN Stars taking to the track on their outlaps. 
our marquee class this weekend, the OKN new engine package this year. Highly competitive class, over 20 drivers fielding an entry uh, into this race weekend. We've seen a lot of competitive driving over the past day, a lot of fast times yesterday in the final practice, that happy hour session lined up everyone nice and close. Uh, we'll see what they can do here as they come around to take their opening laps. 17 drivers on the list here this week. We've lost a couple, picked up a couple here with a few more joining the multi-manufacturer 125 spec class. Only its fifth ever race in America. It's second with the Stars Championship Series, a brand new division, 40 plus horsepower, but a uh, big bobble here for a couple pushing the limit because the power band is tighter on this motor than what we've seen out of most. You don't have as much speed and oomph right out of the corner when it does get in that power band at around nine to 10,000, maybe 12,000 really RPM. Uh, then you quickly get up to that rev limiter range at 15,000. Uh, so with all that in mind, it makes it that much more critical to get the gear ratio right. You don't want to bounce that limiter down the straightaway, but you've got to have really, really good roll speed to the center of the corners. Here's Keek and Bosch on your screen on that MPG Motorsports Kart Republic, and uh, further back, you've got a handful as well. And we heard from Brandon Carr earlier about that rev limiter, sitting on it for a couple seconds there at the end of the straight, so it's a tight balance to find on whether you want the bottom end to get out of the corners or the top end to make some massive runs down the straight. We're seeing four drivers in a line here in Quali drafting uh, is actually going to be it's it's going to be a balance to maintain as you do have some of that arrow wash and we'll see a lot of passing a lot of dicing for position here early in this session. Yeah, we heard from Brandon Carr. It's kind of a mix either way. Well, let's hear from a driver that mastered the old oh, problems for the number six of Eli Fox and his weekend just continues to get more and more frustrating. A DNF in KA starts qualifying and a DNF now here in OKN starts qualifying as well. So his quality sessions put him at the rear for both. It's not as far back in this one, but that's not where you want to be. Keegan Bosch right now with a benchmark here on that MPG Motorsports Kart Republic. Let's go down to the driver who mastered the toe in KA Stars qualifying, James Overbeck. His first career Stars Championship pull, and he's standing by with Alexander Searle and Caleb Viesca. Boys? Thanks, Xander. James, P1 there in the KA Stars class by over two tenths. Timed the draft perfectly there. What a lap. Describe it to me. Um, we were really confused on where we really should go out for qualifying because the front pack's just been so crazy this weekend and everyone's been racing, so we really just had to freestyle it and just go. We wanted to go towards the back, but I didn't want to be too close to other people and we were really able to time it out right. Yeah, I mean, you talked to me uh, after the qualifying session, they were telling me how crazy it's been in practice, how much you guys have been racing. What's the mindset going into the first heat now, knowing, I mean, you're on the front row, starting P1 inside, you know they're going to be dicing. I mean, what's the mindset? It's going to be sketchy. That's all I know, but um, at Go GoPro was a good taste of it. I had to come from the back there, though, so it's going to be a little different starting up front and being up there the whole time rather than driving my way forward, but I think I should be able to get a hold of it pretty fast, but I know it'll be difficult. Yeah, I mean, you talked to me after the qualifying session there, told me you guys really haven't changed a lot. You changed one thing from Trackhouse. You guys are now back to the same setup you ran there in Trackhouse Motorplex. I mean, it's a little bit weird, right? What you think with two tracks that are fairly different in a uh, driving style? Yeah, it's it's definitely weird, but it, it makes sense. I mean, these things stock. They, they work well, and they work well everywhere. And if you're far from stock, then you're probably missing something else. So it, it's been great. Brandon and Polly, they've helped a bunch with finding stuff. And really, I've just had to work on driving so far and eventually got it down. All right, thanks, James. Good luck. Thank you. There you go from pole sitter James Overbeck. Let's go back to your updates here in OK and start qualifying. How about Alex Stanfield, that red and black Gillard for Team GWR? Three-tenths up on the field right now with a big lap that time by over Nicholas Turlecki, Simon. Yeah, and Turlecki only a few hundreds up on the drivers right behind him. The number 13 of Aiden Fox and the 15 of Brandon Carr also in the minute 9.7 range. So three drivers sitting in that minute 9.7 range, but Alex Stanfield three tenths clear of that with a minute 9.4. As we see it, time's clicking off. Brandon Carr will slot himself one thousandth of a second behind Stanfield here, Xander. That was a perfectly timed tow lap for Brandon Carr off his Ryan Perry Motorsport teammate and Josh Campbell. Towed off him now, pulled over to the side, was going to let him go, and Campbell said, no, I'm going to follow you. Alex Stanfield says, fine, you want me to lead? I'll lead the train. He goes by both of them there in the Monza, but Brandon Carr won one thousandth of a second off Alex Stanfield right now, a minute and a half to go here in qualifying. And as close as you could possibly expect out of this class, we knew it was going to be a fight, but one thousandth of a second is out of this world close. Brandon Carr nudging in on that pole lap, a minute 
remaining. We'll see if anyone else improves. Wes Ducek on that last lap, slotted himself into P3 in that number 40 machine. And a lot of viewers here watching along online again, we talked about the multi-manufacturer aspect of this class. Every other division here, besides the Pro Stars, the Pro Masters, and the OKN Stars, you run a single manufacturer engine. The KA produced by IAMI uh, for all the way classes. The same with the Swift motors as well. And then the Rock motors for the Rock subcategories. OKN and uh, KZ, that is a multi-manufacturer formula. Here this weekend, Alex Stanfield, I believe, is still on the Vortex engine, while Brandon Carr and Josh Campbell and the majority of the field on the TM power plant. So how about that for some parity? One one-thousandth between two of the major engine builders competing in the OKN Stars class. General, while granted, they're both on OTK-produced uh, chassis with the Tony Kart for Carr and a Gillard for Alex Stanfield. Two different motors there, and you can see Carr was pushing to keep up with him. He dropped a tire coming out of turn number four, uh, and uh, that time by got a little bit high, wide, and handsome going in. So that's going to hurt him. He will be on the border, Simon. It's going to be tight if they get around here before that checkered flag flies. Certainly, and just to go back to that thousandth of a second, that just shows how close these engine ma manufacturers are together already. First year of the category, and both Vortex and TM power plants looking almost identical out of the gate. Qualifying checkered is out. We saw drivers coming in early on the session. Uh, looks like 109.4 is going to stand for Alex Stanfield. We'll see if anyone else can pop him at the line, but a strong start to the weekend here for Alex. Yeah, he'll come across to put one more lap in. The exclamation point from Alex Stanfield, a 109.27. That's a tenth and a quarter better, and he opens that gap up over Brandon Carr. How about Wes Duchak? on the DR North America. They're on the Modena power plants that time, and Wes Duchak with a good lap earlier on. He goes third. Campbell fourth on the uh, Vortex, uh, or sorry, TM-powered Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Card in fourth. Then the TM for Josh Holtz and Nick Turlecki and the Holtz DD OTKs. They go fifth and sixth. Henry Wheeler, Aiden Fox, Ryan Rafa, Keegan Bosch, the top ten. That's how it stands. We'll talk to Alex Stanfield here in a few moments. Let's send it first down to our top qualifier in pro stars by less than a tenth over Trim Troger. It's A.J. Myers in a familiar territory on pole. Alex? Thank you, Xander. I'm here with A.J. Myers. How does it feel? I mean, yesterday, you only had one pack session. It was actually a ride. Yeah, I mean, we were thinking about driving uh, yesterday. Like, all right, screw it, let's do it. They put the cart together through the day, got the last practice in, and then right from the first practice, I mean, it was it was there, haven't changed anything, put some tires on, and we got pole. Sounds good. And also, you're coming off a big win uh, from USPKS, uh, your first win and I guess, a year, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but how does it feel, and how, how do you think it's going to go here in the next heat race? Yeah, it was good to get that win off my back. And then we're here now with some new power with Staney Engines. And, I mean, it's been – put them on. It's been right there from the beginning. been good. And uh, little games being played out there. But uh, I'm ready for anything. Sounds good. Thank you, AJ. Back to you, Xander. Thank you, Caleb, there. Here to A.J. Myers, smiling, obviously in a good mood. Of course you're going to be in a good mood when things are going really, really well here uh, for the Magic Kart USA factory driver. We're going to take a commercial break, let the scale line roll on through. When we come back, we'll chat with Alex Stanfield, and then following that, we'll conclude the lunch break. So the on-track action on pause for the moment. It comes back at the top of the hour with heat racing. Welcome to Ohio Kart Parts, the Midwest's largest Burrell Art racing go-kart dealer. We carry Burrell Art, Daniel Ricardo, Charles Leclerc, and Robert Kubica brand of go-karts, as well as parts from names you trust. Chassis components from Freeline, engines from IAMI, Briggs & Stratton, and soon-to-be Tillotson, electronics from AIM Technologies, MG Tires, Taika Axles, seating from Tillot, Arai Helmets, and 3 tenths race products. Visit us online at www.ohiocartparts.com, at our facility in Lorain, Ohio, or at the local track on race weekends. If we don't have it, call us at 440-628-CART, that's 5278, and we will do what we can to help you out.
Our last pull award winner here from qualifying, Alex Stanfield with a burner time, put a tenth and a quarter on the field on his final lap and improved when most pulled on in. He's standing by with Caleb Vieska and Alexander Searle. Thanks, Andrew. Like you said, when most pulled on in, you went around for one more lap. You said they parked it there in the Monza corner, so you really had to go for another lap there. All by yourself, put it P1. How did it feel? Yeah, it felt great. Um, I was going on a decent lap, and everybody just pulled off in the Monza corner, held me up about half a second, so I knew I had to really go for it. The last lap, I just tried to nail every corner as good as I could. No, no drafts. So that was pretty tough, but I just hung it on till the end and got pull. Yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit after the session. You said car got a little bit tight on you. I mean, what are you guys gonna change here for the first heat? Yeah, it was just a little tight, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, it just drove it in a lot harder. Tire pressure was pretty low, so it was good at the end. Uh, we were focusing on our end runs this weekend, so yeah, it, it was really good. All right, thanks, Alex. Good luck. Thank you. There you go from Alex Stanfield here, folks. The lunch break underway now here from King of the Castle, and uh, we will get things going as the day rolls on. Back at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific for Heat 1 and Heat 2.
And welcome back, King of the Castle, Stars Championship Series Round 2 at NCMP Newcastle Motorsports Park. KA Masters kicking off your heat action racing, getting set on their outlap, getting those tires warm and ready to go. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, looking to be a, looking to be a pretty good one here. I mean, uh, we're here on Newcastle, the KA guys. Uh, draft fest, really, around this racetrack, right? Carts aren't the quickest. Um, we're going to see a pretty good race here. I mean, we've got Christopher Horn. Uh, on the front row here, starting P1, John Bonanno, he's been quick so far at Trackhouse and coming to Newcastle, he's going to go P2. Uh, row 2 is going to be Andy Kutcher and Chris Kutcher here. So uh, related there, those guys on the road too. Brian Daniele, he's been quick all year long. Uh, arguably the quickest guy at Trackhouse Motorplex that we saw last month, just couldn't really put it together when it mattered. Mark Steele in P6. Ryan Kasner, four tenths off there in qualifying, but I expect to see him much higher up here in the heat race, starting P7. P8 is going to be Jacob Neary, P9, Sean Bailiff with the Trinity Karting Group there. Looking to see him rolling off P9. Gordon Cameron rounding off row 5. Uh, Min Yang Yu in a P11. Anthony Stifler, P12. Brant Estes, P13. Jamie Bradford in P14. Chris Stevens, P15. Bob Davis, P16. Tom Gertzner down in P17. And Kevin Simonellick in P18. Rounding off your grid here for KA Masters is going to be Jeff Clyde. Thanks for running us through the field there. Alexander Searle joining me in the booth. My name's Simon Sykes, and we're bringing heat racing action to you as they round the final corner. Last little bit of scrubbing on those tires as they get set, and Christopher Horan is ready to take the field to the green flag. Getting ready for heat racing action. John Bonanno lines up to his outside. They're heading down the tram lines, getting ready to take the green flag. 19 drivers in this KA Masters field. Nice and slow as they approach. We'll be waiting, waiting, waiting. And it's green flag and we are racing here in KA Masters for the first time this weekend as they head past the dog leg down into turn one. Christopher Hand with a nice start. They'll all tuck nicely in the line. A little bit of two by two farther through the field. But everyone clean through turn one so far into the Monza Bowl. Haran with a two or three cart length lead. A pass there for third as they are smooth and through the first couple of corners here. Yeah, inside row got a really good jump there. I mean, it's a, it's a really long straightaway there heading towards the green. It takes seemingly ages uh, in the seat of the cockpit there, but good start there for Chris Kircher. Immediately found his way into P2, so John Bonanno falls back to P3, but just expect these guys buy their time a little bit, right? It's just the first heat of the weekend. You want to you be patient because, I mean, one bad heat will uh, mess up your start position for tomorrow. And you say that, but Chris Kutcher is not being patient right now. He gets past John Bonanno and immediately is putting the pressure on Christopher Horan out front. Takes it from a three-cart length lead down to nothing. He's all over that rear bumper of that 224 machine out in first place. The top four nicely in line. It's quite a lead group we have here. Almost seven drivers strong as they look to complete their first lap, and that's a big wheel off there for Chris Kutcher as he is pushing hard to make it up to that top spot. John Bonanno closely follows in third with Andy Kutcher right behind him. Yeah, I mean, you say Andy Kutcher there with a wheel off, it's, or Chris Kutcher, sorry. It's pretty easy to do that around this racetrack. I mean, going clockwise, the exit of each corner, you don't really have the curbing that you normally would have going counterclockwise. So really the exit, like we see there, it's just dirt. So you really have to be super, super accurate with where you position your go-kart. Otherwise, you'll end up in the grass there. As we see John Bonanno up on the wheel there, closing the gap to Andy Kutcher. This is what I expected, though, here from the KA Masters, guys. Uh, just, you know, we got a seven-cart train here. It's really hard to pull away around Newcastle. It's calm and collected so far. Everyone's staying in line, getting down to race pace. Like you said, uh, with the reverse layout we have here, you're, you're not running on exit curbs on the exit of corners. It's just grass. But on the entries, you can run onto the supposed entry curbing, which is normally your exit curbing. will give you a little bit more track radius coming through here. Field tightening up these top seven. Dicing nicely, staying in line so far as they head through. Still six and a half minutes remaining, plus two laps. So they will get settled in, and your top seven still nose to tail as they come to complete two laps. Yeah, the guy on the move right now is Mark Steele. Didn't really have the qualifying he would have wanted. Already at the P4 there. One of the Canadian guys here for the Stars Championship Series. I mean, I've raced against him a few times in Briggs a few years ago. Really, really quick driver. He was pushing John Bono around the entire racetrack that last time by. But in fact, your purple guy last time by, Ryan Kazard, a 116.3. He has caught the back of this train. Here he comes. He was six tenths clear of anybody else ahead of him last time by. That's, a, that's just how important the draft is. Yeah, absolutely. Like you mentioned, that draft being so important here, he'll put a 
whopping amount of time on the next fastest lap so far back in that pack. Christopher Horan out front, only a 16.9, six tenths slower than Kasner last time by, but he is leading that group. No toe for him out front. He's just focused on hitting his marks and staying ahead of Chris. I, now Andy Kushner in P2. Yeah, Chris Kushner's falling back just a little bit there down the P5. Down Mark Steele and John Bonanno, but here we have possibly a four-car break. We have Mark Steele to the inside of John Bonanno in the comp cart. The Burrell Art driver is going to maybe sneak into P3. Couldn't hold the inside. Good driving there for both those guys, but that racing brings... 5th, 6th, and 7th right back into play. Now, Bonanno not going to give that one up easily. He wants to maintain that P3 position on track, try and head up towards Andy Kushner, and hopefully on to Christopher Heron, who's still maintaining about a half-second lead out front of this field. A couple of cart links, 1st and 2nd, have an advantage. But behind that, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all nose to tail as Bonanno leads that pack back towards the front, wrapping up the third lap of competition here. Still four minutes plus two laps remaining. We saw Peak a look to the inside, but no major moves made. And still nose to tail, pretty much for your top seven to start this KA Masters pre-final number one here. I just want to mention really quickly, I mean, last time I six tenths. Let's make it a second there. Ryan Kasner, the one fifteen one, a full second clear of the entire field. He has now officially caught up to the back of this train. It's an eight-car breakaway out front in KA Masters. Here comes Ryan Kasner on the Marinello go-kart. Kasner, your fastest, not just by a little bit, but like you mentioned, a full second. Draft's going to play a lot into that, but you can't take away the pure speed that is required to put a second on the rest of the field. Still running in P8. He's got the pace to take it to the front as we see battling for that P3 position. It'll be Mark Steele and John Bonanno uh, attacking, trying to sort their way through and looming in the background. Ryan Kasner, the fastest card on track by a solid margin. Still sitting in P8, but has closed the gap up and is going to look to make moves. He'll make one to the inside of Brian Dinelli. He'll take that P7 spot away as they... Complete another lap by Kasner, the fastest man on track, making moves, making aggressive moves, heading up towards the front of the field here, Alex. Yeah, I mean, that's how you know your go-kart's flying around. I mean, it's, that's, not a, that's, that's a pretty unorthodox place to pass. I mean, I've seen guys make moves there, you know, quite often to that left-hander. See one cart off there. See him get a number. I believe that was uh, Chris Kutcher there dropping a tire on the exit of the I-80. Just goes to show you how difficult it is around this racetrack. Makes it easy there for Kasner with dirt on uh, Kusher's tires. But like I was saying with Kasner, his go-kart's just on absolute rails right now. Made it look so easy to the left-hander. It's a flat-out corner here in the KA, guys, and he just made a stick on Brian Danelli there. And Kusher the opposite. That'll be Chris Kusher to specify. Has not had the best start to this one. He was up in P2 for a moment. Now back down to P7. Kasner working his way forward through this field, even his last time by. Fastest on track while passing carts, making moves. So look for him to take that number 202 machine up farther up the field. Two minutes in change remaining, plus two laps once we close out the time here. Still Christopher Horan with a nice cart length lead out front. John Bonanno has worked his way back up to P2. Yeah, I mean, how impressive he is from Christopher Curran. I mean, it looks to me like through the tight part of this racetrack, you see him right there extend his advantage over John Bonanno. It's been like that every single lap. I mean, through the straightaways, of course, with the draft and everything else in the play, you know, they catch right up to his bumper there. But through the infield, he seems to just have enough to be able to pull away here in KA. I mean, it's pretty impressive there from Christopher. Yeah, especially with all, all the drafting we're seeing. And we'll see him move to the inside. A two for one. Kasner, two for one. He'll look to make the pass. Not happy with the result of that. He'll lose a spot and pick one up at the same time. It's he, he will lose two spots out of that, and not not a great move there. He tried to make it work. It didn't quite happen on the exit of that corner, and it'll shove him a little bit farther back out front. John Bonanno closing up on Christopher Hand. He's all over that rear bumper now, Alex. Yeah, Kasner, that was, that was a result of he didn't really plan on a two-for-one there. He went in. Those guys probably break a little bit sooner than he thought, so it, it with his normal breaking point, it kind of just put him for a two-for-one special there, and... He kind of let him by. I wonder if he thinks that he got into him and just didn't want to risk a penalty and let him by. So good sportsmanship from there from Ryan Kastner. Plus, he knows that he has enough pace here with a minute plus two laps to go to where he might still be able to get a top three here in the heat. Even that last lap of 115.2. We've seen the times of the, the lead group still knocking down, but they can't match Kastner's pace as of yet. But is Kastner going to be able to work forward any more that lead group? Starting to space out. About a cart length gap in between each of them now. Kastner, the closest one to... The cart in front, he is right all over that rear bumper of the number 234 Mark Steele as they come across the line. Yeah, 16 seconds plus two laps to go here in the KA Masters, guys. Masters class. 
I was surprised Castro didn't go for a move there in I-80. I mean, he's been really, really quick all heat race long. Was on the bumper of Mark Steele there. I wonder if he feels as though Mark's a little bit too far back from Jacob Neary. He wants to push Mark up there and maybe try to work his way up and make a, make a fight out of the top five. If he, if he can push Mark up to the groups in front of him, it might help him rather than fighting him in the immediate term. As we see time run out, this will be... Uh, they'll complete this lap and have two more remaining, so we'll get two to go next time by Christopher Rand extending that margin. He and ba Bonanno checking out over P3 of Andy Kushner in the 296 machine. Yeah, it looks to me like Tazer's pace is stalled out just a little bit as the leaders are doing 15-4s. Now, 15-4 there for Christopher Horan all by himself is really impressive. So Kasner must have been a little bit higher in the tire pressures. You know, didn't have the qualifying he would have wanted, like I said. So he, he must have just been out there on maybe two or three PSI higher, higher than everybody else. Tried to make positions up early. It worked out for him a little bit, but now the pace has stalled out just a little bit for him in P6. Yeah, exactly. That tire pressure getting a lot of advantage at the beginning of this race, but we'll see the time start to click down. Christopher Ham with no draft will pop a 115.271 last time by. He and Bonanno still picking up the pace, matching Kasner's times from earlier this session. So the pace starting to come down as Horan and Bonanno separate themselves from the rest of the pack. Yeah, like you said, pace increasing as the race. Uh, amount of laps are decreasing here. Uh, Horan holding off John Bonanno, but this is the closest we've seen the comp cart all race long to Christopher Horan going through a scoreboard corner. Let's see what he can do here. Mike peek a nose, doesn't make it work. John Bonanno is going to push Christopher Horan, I, I suspect, for this entire lap and make it a, a two-car fight for the final lap in the heat race. Doesn't want to make any risks, of course, for the heat race. Of course. Absolutely. In, in your first pre-final, you're going to make sure that you, you get through, finish strongly, but you don't want to take the risk and, and potentially knock yourself farther down the order. So all playing fair so far, so good. Two laps to go. They'll get the white flag next time by only a couple of corners until they take that. They'll head through these 90s, a right 90, followed by a left, and then two more right Handers. Very quick corners to close out the last section of this track. Horan masterfully through those will extend his advantage over Bonanno and take the white flag this time by. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with what I've seen from the Cosmic Driver there. Christopher Horan, like you said, just masterfully dicing his way through those uh, three 90-degree corners. Just unbelievable grip in the go-kart. Through the straightaways, of course, with the draft that uh, Bonanno has, he closes the gap up to Christopher Horan, but it's not going to be enough, it seemingly seems like, because... You know, like I said, Christopher Rand just super dominant through the infield of this racetrack. And driver to mention, purple last time by Mark Steele in the 234 machine, popping off a 115.164. That'll beat Kasner's best time in the session uh, thus far, and will move him into the fastest lap position. We'll see what he can do with that. As that lead group is still fairly tightly packed, we could see some action, but I wouldn't expect too much as these drivers are, are experienced, they're smart, they'll want to get to the end uh, without any issues, make sure they get to the next heat final in a good position. Yeah, like you said, I mean, no need to, to make a risk. These guys obviously with the Masters class, right? A lot of experience here. They know what it takes to, to win a feature race, and what it really takes is to not not make silly moves in the heat races and, you know, hinder your progress. You see Christopher Moran rounding the final few corners here. This is the part of the racetrack where he's been just so fast. The cart hands aren't moving at all. Cart is on absolute rails. They've got that cosmic dialed in. Rounding the final corner here, he's going to shake the checkered flag to win the first heat of King of the Castle. Stars championship series and christopher horan wire to wire start to finish will lead every lap of this race and take your first heat race victory of the day well done by christopher horan he'll be followed up closely by john bonanno andy kushner coming home p3 jacob neary coming home fourth and mark Steele round out your top five farther back your quickest driver in the early stages of the race ryan kasner will come home p6 chris kushner uh, will solidify himself in 7th. Brian Danielli, P8. Sean Bailiff, P9. And Mingan Zhu comes home in P10. That'll round out your top 10 here in KA Masters. A little farther back, Anthony Stifler, Jamie Bradford, Grant Estes, Chris Stevens, and Bob Davis are your top 15. Outside that, Gordon Cameron, Kevin Simonelec, Jeff Clyde, and Tom Gerstner are the rest of your field in your first KA Masters Heat 1 here at King of the Castle, Newcastle Motorsports Park. When we come back, more heat action, more heat racing to come.
Welcome back here live from King of the Castle here at Newcastle Motorsports Park, live from the Stars Championship Series here. Good first heat race there for the KA Masters, guys. Now we got Micro Stars. What do you think, Simon? As they take to the field, I'm sure we'll see a lot of good racing. We just came from the most experienced, some of the most experienced drivers on the grid down to the youngest class we have here. So I'm sure the racing is going to be interesting uh, with a big field as they'll take the warm-up lap. We'll run you through the order uh, when we get a chance here as they come around, scrubbing their tires, getting the warm-up lap done on pole. Jake Manelio, P1. Colt Schneegerberg, his outside, will close out row one into row two. Emerson Lane and Danny O'Gara behind that. Enzo De Janeiro and Cade Wolf. Row three will be Sterling, no, row four, Sterling Milata, Tatsumi White. Row five, Parker Stewart and Asher Ferris. Row six, Caleb Smith, Lawrence Preeman. Row seven will be Christopher Lavoie and Riley, Riley Dobelier. Row seven, Bryson Scales and Austin Taylor. Behind that, Griffin Vukic and Drake Williamson. Callahan Myers and Hudson Howard will make up row 10 and Anthony Mazakulo, George Zeminski right behind them, and then round out your field, Trip Golnick and Liet Simnelik as they get all in formation and warm those tires. Yeah, struggling a little bit there to get the formation. A few guys couldn't really figure out what spot they were on the track. Uh, a few guys fully stopped on the racetrack. One guy ran into the back of them. Uh, luckily, no drop-down bumpers there, so not too much of an issue. Uh, but now you want to see here at the start of the race. They've got it all sorted out now. Uh, as they get ready to take the green here, around in the final few corners. Quick shout-out, though, because we didn't get to uh, interview these guys. Jake Manalio on pole by one one-thousandth of a second over Colton Schneegerberg. The top four separated by seven hundredths of a second. That's to be expected, though. I mean, with the, mini, like, with, the, with, the, with the micro and mini Swift, and even with the KA guys, like I was saying, lower horsepower, draft is super huge around here in Newcastle. You expect to see a field that tight. Yeah, they're the youngest drivers we have here this weekend, but that does not mean they aren't talented. Obviously, with the qualifying times, we've seen an extremely competitive field here in Micro Swift as they will head towards the tram lines and get ready to take the green flag for their first heat race of the weekend. Emerson Lane leading the field down to the green flag in the tram lines. Everything's looking good. We'll be waiting, 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 and it's green flag, and we are racing in Micro Swift, heat number one. Yeah, same as the last heat we saw there for K Masters, inside row gets a huge jump just with the nature of the racetrack. When you go from flat out to I-80, we see two carts around. It's one of the MPG guys. A few more carts around. Oh, that is not what you want to see there exiting I-80. Let's hope that driver is okay. A few guys got together. Yeah, tough, tough start to this one as uh, several drivers ending up around. Uh, one out of his cart. Looks like everything was all okay. Don't think there were any injuries through that one, which is always good to see. Unfortunate start for those few drivers, but out front, a group of three taking off. Jake Manelio, Emerson Lane, Colton Schneegenberg making their marks here early. Top two starting to check out here, Alex. Yeah, Emerson Lane finds himself in P1. Uh, Manalio falls back to P3 early on in the start there. Didn't really get the start he would have wanted. Schneegenberg's going to hold on to P2. But like you said, I mean, just super tight up front. This could be like this all race long. Yeah, we'll expect these drivers to swap spots many times throughout the duration of this heat race, as is draft will play a massive role in these low horsepower classes. So as they head down that straight, the lack of air being disturbed from the cart in front is going to make it much easier to close on to that rear bumper. That number 50 of the Trinity carting machine, Emerson Lane, still leading the field through the first lap. He's got drivers right up on his rear bumper, though, as they head into the first hairpin, turn two officially. Uh, still a close race, the top group all in one line. Yeah, top three breaking away just a little bit there. We see Manalio get to the bumper of Colin Schneegerberg. That messed up his exit on the Monza corner. That's going to bring Enzo Di Janeiro and Daniel Gara back into play. It's now a five-cart breakaway here in Micro Swift, maybe even six. There's a comp car to Cade Wolf. He's back in the mix now. He's starting to P6. He's, up to, he's still in P6 there in the comp cart. Five-cart breakaway here in Micro Swift. These drivers not battling as of yet. Young but smart. They're going to hold their lanes and make sure they get to the end of this heat race nice and clean. We'll see a move to the lead, and that is Colton Schneegenberg taking the lead for the first time this race. Only a thousandth off pole. He will make his mark and move into that first position right over Emerson Lane as they head through 
the t tight technical section of this track into the 90s that close out the end of this lap. He's actually extended a several cart length advantage in just a few corners. Yeah, Emerson Lane made a bit of, bit of a mistake there, exiting the corner on the back straightaway. Made it up, though, and that left-hander got a lot of curbing there, but made it stick. He's back to the bumper of Colton Schneegerberg. Let's see if he's going to make a move for I-80 or just push him down the back, uh, down the front straightaway here as we see a move there. I believe that is Enzo Dujanero and Jake Manalio not going to make it stick there. The teammates see if they can work together to catch up front. Cade Wolf making a move now, Daniel Garros. to move the comp car up into P5. Good run for Cade so far. Smooth racing. So far, a little bit of incident on the first lap, but aside from that, it's been clean so far. Colton Schneegenberg currently your leader ahead of Emerson Lane and Jake Manilio with just under five minutes oh. plus two laps remaining, and that is Colton Schneegenberg off the track. Why? Not sure exactly if there was contact there or not, but a tough break early in this race. That'll put him farther down the order back to maybe seventh. Uh, a tough break from the lead uh, off the track. That's going to reset him farther down the order, Alex. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Colton got a little bit of help there from Emerson Lane. I, I, I don't know if he did because it looked to me that Emerson Lane had a little bit of an early apex to the corner, so he might have got the rear bumper of him, but it looked to me that Schneekenberg just carried a little bit too much speed into the hairpin, but with the hand in the air that he threw it, it, it seems to me that he felt like contact. Yeah, very very not happy with that. Um, that's that's going to hurt his first heat race of the day. He'll try and work back towards the front, but uh, em Emerson Lane starting to stretch out an advantage over the four carts that are nose to tail behind him. Yeah, that's the section of the racetrack we saw last lap where he just clawed back the gap that Colton Schneegenberg extended over him. So that's his part of the racetrack. The Trinity Karting guys, at least for the Microsoft side of things, have got that part of the racetrack sorted out. All the fast corners, they feel like they're dialed in. Look at the difference the draft makes, though. The two, uh, two teammates there were maybe you know, five, six car lengths behind them. Right back to the bumper now, entering I-80 into the Mazda corner. That was Jake Manilio and Enzo Di Janeiro closing up quickly with the assistance of the draft. But Cade Wolf. In that comp cart, sitting in P4, it was the fastest cart on track last time by with a 120.4, a tenth of a second faster than your leader. So we will expect a tight battle for the rest of this race as he's looking to maybe cross over, look to the inside. Not quite as he's trying to find a way by that number 90 machine of Enzo Di Janeiro in front of him. Yeah, Cade Wolf feels as though he's faster than Enzo at this point of the race. He went for a move, backed out of it. It's one of those moves where it's you either got to go for it or don't go for it because it, it, it cost some progress on the exit of the corner there. So now it, it gave Enzo a bit of an advantage there, a bit of breathing room entering the back part of the racetrack. And it'll back him up all the way to Danny O'Gara, who is all over that rear bumper of Cade Wolf right now. So head back into the 90s where Emerson Lane has been so strong to start this race. We'll see what kind of advantage he can hold through this final section of the track. But that's Jake Manilia holding on fairly strongly. About a cart link separate them currently, Alex. Yeah, but here, enter the final corner. Watch the draft as they get go down to I-80 here. Jake Manalio up on the wheel, puts his head down here. Look at the toe he's getting. He's going to make a peek probably to the inside here. There he goes, Jake Manalio and Enzo and Cade Wolf. It's a three-for-one there. Move and Emerson Lane down to fourth. Well, that was a big move. With the assistance of the draft, we've seen that's been so heavy. The top five all nose to tail currently a little bit farther back. Colton Schneegenberg in that P7 who had that incident early. The fastest man on track last time by by over two tenths. So he is charging hard to try and make up uh, what he lost just a few laps ago with two minutes plus two laps remaining in this Micro Swift heat number one. Yeah, plenty of time here for Colton Schneegenberg to make the ground up that he lost uh, earlier in this race. I mean, he's in the background there. You see him. He is coming to this first, to this top five group here. And if they keep racing the way they're doing, like Cade Wolf peaks a nose there and Enzo Di Janeiro couldn't make it stick. The two teammates still up front. Nose to tail. They cannot break away from each other in this class. But these long straights, this 1.2 mile circuit of Newcastle Motorsports Park, it's very hard to build a gap when the draft is as big as we've seen. A nice move there for the MPG car as he slips through and is battling throughout the top group here, Alex. Yeah, two teammates out front breaking away. We see Emerson Lane back up to P3. Like you said, Daniel Garo on the FPG moves up to P4. Cade Wolf falling back to the clutches of Colton Schneegenberg. Where has he come from? Two tenths clear again. No more. Make it almost a second clear of the leader there. Colton Schneegenberg is on a mission to make amends for the mistake he had earlier in this race. He is back to P5. Yeah, by far the fastest card on track last time. By, by over a half second better than anyone's best and by a second over everyone's last lap. So Colton Schneegenberg, the man on a mission in that number 16 energy cart as you watch him solidify his spot back into this top group fighting just in front of him. He's going to look and try and capitalize 
on this action. He's going to duck to the inside. He'll get one spot there over Enzo De Janeiro. De Janeiro, rough start to this lap. Started the lap P2, now back down in P4 or 5 at this point. Yeah, here comes Colin Schneegerberg. He might make a move here on the MP2 driver. Not going to make it stick. A little bit defensive there from Emerson Lane. He's going to back him up into the MP2 driver and the energy karting driver there of Colin Schneegerberg. Colin Schneegerberg, man on a mission here. There's 30 seconds plus two laps to go. If they cross the line before the lap, it'll be three to go. If not, it'll be two to go here. But Colin Schneegerberg has a chance at a heat victory here somehow. Somehow, after that big off, he's made it all the way back to P4, running strong. Lots of pace in that energy cart number 16 machine as he is all over that rear bumper of the MPG Motorsports machine. Uh, is that Danny, Danny O'Gara, maybe? Yeah, somehow Danny O'Gara has found himself in a P3, the MPG driver. Emerson Lane, now the Trinity Karting Group, uh, Microsoft Kart. He's going to go to P1 there, and Schneegerberg going to go to P3. So Emerson Lane now going to have to go super defensive in the Monza. Might have been a little bit too early there. We got the two-to-go signal, so they just crossed the line right after the timing of scoring went to zero. So only two-to-go here in the Heat 1, Microsoft. Two to go, but we're seeing defensive moves like it's the last lap out of Emerson Lane. They're all fighting for that top step in this first heat race of Micro Swift. Not going defensive into there. Nose to tail. Top five, six, seven carts all in one line. Yeah, I mean, it's now a seven cart train out front here in Micro Swift. I mean, on the back of this grid, on the back of this train, we have Tatsumi White uh, in P7. He's coming. Schneegerberg going to make a move over. Uh, Jake Manalio. Manalio's going to go from first to third in this lap. Emerson Lane is up to P1. Schneekerberg P2. Oh, Daniel O'Gara thought about a move there. The double left-hander couldn't make it stick. Manalio in third. O'Gara holds on the fourth. And Schneekerberg all the way from that off and being in seventh place. Back up to P2. Looking, working that rear bumper of Emerson Lane out front. He wants that top spot back. Emerson Lane going defensive there in the fast 90s. You don't see that very often. That's going to back him up even more. Entering the final lap of this heat race down the front stretch. Emerson Lane immediately goes defensive here. Schneegerberg going to follow through. Manalo is going to follow him through. Orgaro is going to get left on the outside there. Enzo De Janeiro is going to make a move in the P4. Around the outside, Colton Schneegerberg couldn't make it stick in the I-80. Emerson Lane holding on once again. Entering the Monza corner now, Emerson Lane still being defensive. Manalio's going to go to the inside. What an opportunistic move there from the number nine karting, uh, car driver of Jake, uh, Jake Manalio there. Schneegerberg back to P3. Emerson Lane now extending his advantage just a little bit entering scoreboard. And Emerson Lane going defensive even with the cart length advantage. Oh. That'll bring the carts back in a big crash. That's Cade Wolf, Danny O'Gara, and one more driver inside that top group going out early on this last lap. Unfortunate for those drivers. That's not what they'll want to see in this first heat race. That's going to reset them farther down the order. But out front, Emerson Lane still with the advantage as they're coming to the close in the second half of this last lap now. That's Colton Schneegenberg back. Trying to make that move to P2. Not going to make it stick entirely. Still working. P2, 3, and 4 all nose to tail. Emerson Lane with a healthy advantage out front. That number 9 of Jake Manelio holding on to P2 for dear life. Colton Schneegenberg looking for any way to try and get around. Can't quite do it yet. We're in the last couple corners. These 90 degree turns to close the end of this track. Emerson Lane's going to take this one, but Colton Schneegenberg not going to be able to do anything to answer to Jake Manilio. And Emerson Lane will take your first heat victory in Micro Swift. Jake Manilio coming home P2. And Colton Schneegenberg, what a drive back from P7 and an off after leading early to come back and finish in P3. Enzo De Janeiro. P4 and Sterling Mulata rounds out your top five. Farther back, Lawrence Perriman, Anthony Mazzaculo, Bryson Scales, Asher Ferris, and Riley Dobelier are your top ten. Yeah, I mean, the contact there, that was Tatsumi White, Danny O'Gara, and Cade Wolf all involved there in the scoreboard corner. A little bit of, an, a, little bit of a late move there from Tatsumi White, I feel like. Got to the rear of uh, Danny O'Gara and Cade Wolf was just a, a, an innocent bystander there in the incident. All three of those guys fell down pretty far down the order. I think they are actually all out of this race. So from what was looking like a top five for all three of those drivers are now, you know, 20th, 21st, and 22nd there. So Yeah, for three of your drivers with the pace, certainly to run in the top group and fight for wins, they're going to have a rough end to this one with Cade Wolf, the top of the group, in 19th place. That's going to hurt them going into their next races. When we come back, we will have more heat racing action live from King of the Castle, Newcastle Motorsports Park, Stars Championship Series, round two. Stay with us.
check. Okay, the least here. Simon Sykes joining myself, Xander Clements in the booth. Happy to bring you all of Heat 2 action. We do apologize for the temporary blackout, the uh, power outage here in the area. Significantly threw a wrench into today, but the Stars Championship Series crew was on top of it. Generators to get the essentials to go, the scales and the timing and scoring ran us through the first round of heat races. In fact, we just watched a great OKN Stars heat with Alex Stanfield and Henry Wheeler having a phenomenal battle down to the finish. We've got at least everything for heat number two all lined up and ready to go for uh, the KA Masters class to kick things off, of course, uh, from the first heat race uh, here as they uh, work their way out, you have Christopher Horan and John Bonanno on the front row. It'll be a long run down the uh, long pond straightaway to get things lined up to go racing here once again. So it's been a crazy, crazy day. It is hot, but everyone's ready, and they've already been on track once. This is a second shot to give yourself a better start in the pre-final, and the lights are off, and we're away down to turn number one. And as they head down to turn number one, for the first time back on the broadcast in a few hours, glad to be live again. All clean through turn one, side by side, further back in the pack. Uh, Bonanno will lose out one spot there. He'll drop to P3. A nice little gap out for Christopher Horan. The top three nose to tail. 
Andy Kushner managed to make his way up into that P2 spot. Top three on a small breakaway so far, Xander. There's a look at your wide view here. Ryan Kastner under fire there for that fifth position. A great start for the second race in a row for Brian Danielli to recover from that outside lane. Side by side, Sean Bailiff trying the inside on Mark Steele. He could not get through and Steele aboard that Ricardo cart. Holds on to that seventh position. In fact, Bailiff will lose his spot or almost lose one. He does lose one in the process to Jacob Neary on the AEM card in Cosmic. So here's a look that is, uh, I believe, fourth, fifth, and sixth on your screen. Chris Kutcher along with Ryan Kastner with a nice move in the middle of the uh, horseshoe. What a pass. We don't see a lot of those there. We see some crossovers, but hardly ever an individual pass. Nicely done by the number two plate of uh, Ryan Kastner. Kastner on the pace early in heat number one had the fastest lap times through the first half of the race maybe a little bit higher on the tire pressure in that heat but already showing strong pace and a willingness to move forward in this one he came from a long way back in the last one ran some great times but out front top three Christopher Horan, Andy Kushner and John Bonanno edging out a several cart length gap over their nearest competitor in P4 Brian Daniello followed closely by Ryan Kasner so one lap in the books here as they uh, work their way on through and we'll uh, go side by side here for a quick interview as timing and scoring updates and we'll pull that up on the left side of the screen at the end of the lap let's send it out trackside Alexander Serling and Caleb Vieska have caught up with our top finishers from the OKN Stars opening heat race Alex Thank you, Zander. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alex Stanfield, I'm so sorry. I'm here joined with Alex Stanfield. He took the win in the first heat. Firstly, congrats. Um, in the first heat, it seemed like you were kind of falling a little bit off the pace in the beginning. You did get a lead, um, but you were falling a little bit off um, to, the, to the leader, and then you kind of caught back at the end. What's the secret, and how did you catch him in the end? Yeah, on the start, we had a good start. Uh, I think we had like a whole half, half a straightaway gap, and then uh, tire pressure was pretty low. But that was good for the ending. Uh, just chased down Henry Wheeler at the end. I think I caught him a little off guard, passed him, and uh, just defended for the lead and uh, held on for the win. Yeah, and we were also talking a lot about um, the track evolution. So how do you think that's going to uh, come into play later on in the next races, and what's your plan going into the next one? Yeah, I don't think we're going to do much. Uh, just play it by ear, see how the track looks uh, for these next few classes, and see how it goes. Thank you, Alex. Back to you, Xander. There you go, hearing from Alex Stanfield again. Just uh, looked like he faded a little bit through that first heat race. Got out to an early lead, got tracked down, ran him back down. Where he was a little better, was able to make some moves. A little bit wide for Ryan Kastner. He dropped the two left side tires back for fourth and fifth off the edge of the racetrack down by turn number two. But he was able to recover. He'll lose a little time to Brian Danielli. But now at full speed here, now with two laps in, let's see if we can get our timing and scoring up to date here on the left-hand side of your screen. And for Chris Horan leading the way, he has not seen a challenge just yet from Andy Kutcher and John Bonanno. The field cycling on through that green corner here and they'll head up the hill back towards the back sector into that cell tower hairpin single file still and some very uh, tame calm and uh, conservative racing up front to start to say the least here Simon. Yeah Chris Horan went wire to wire in that first heat race leading every single lap and taking the checkered flag. It looks like he might have a little bit more pressure in this one. He's got Bonanno and Kushner closely following him, trying to ease their way into that top spot, see if they can take a lap or two away from Christopher Horan. But the top three out to a great start so far. Kasner not showing the pace that he had at the beginning of the last heat, maybe dropped his pressures a little bit. We'll look for him to have pace as the race continues. Par for the course for the field as they head down the front stretch. Here's an update on the standings as they run. Horan the leader, big run coming from Andy Kutcher. He looked to the inside at the dog leg, backed out of it right there at that kink, going into turn at number two. And he stays in line. And another dropped wheel. This time it was Brian Danielli going a little wide as it looked like uh, back for fourth. Uh, Ryan Kastner had gotten around him. And now John bonano has got a big run on Andy Kutcher here for second. He'll stay tucked in line. I think for the third placement, John Bonanno, he'll ride at this point as long as uh, he can to uh, try and mitigate the damage and loss to the leader, Haran. Because like you said, Simon, he led wire to wire. These guys know that. They want to keep him within striking distance, and so that's why you're seeing John Bonanno just kind of riding there in third, hoping that Andy Kutcher can get up and do this. Down to the inside to try for the lead. He can't fully get the pass done. That'll hurt his momentum over through the horseshoe, but Bonanno gives him a little love tap, says, all right, get back after it, go back to him again, and let's go try another time. Four minutes plus a lap here left in this one as they head down uh, through the short shoot towards the final couple corners. And on we go with about a three-car length lead now for Haran to the final few turns. And Bonanno seem, seeming content to let Andy Kushner go ahead and take that fight to Christopher Horan. He, he's pretty happy sitting there in that P3 place while Andy does all the work for him out front. Andy pushing back up towards Horan. He's got a massive draft down this front straight. He's going to look to the inside, down the inside. 
not going to make the move, going to hold back on that one. Still, Christopher Hand, your leader, but the top four now nose to tail, and in that background, Ryan Kastner making his way up to this top group. Mr. Marinello on the move. Ryan Kastner has put a couple good laps together. That time, by he was half a second better than the leaders, thanks to all the battling they were doing. It's allowed the number two plate to latch on to the back bumper of that 272 fluorescent comp card of John Bonanno in third. Behind him, Brian Daniele after the off, unfortunately has faded back another spot. Mark Steele has gotten by for position number five on that Beryl Art chassis. So change there for position number five while the leaders stay single file up front. And the gap back to them is about a second or so just under that last time by, although Kastner has closed up over the course of it. Here's a look again at your top four coming down the short shoot. It is about a two car length lead for Chris Oran, and he knows that he's still the fastest. The draft is all that's keeping these guys with him because they lose time through the more technical parts of the racetrack, Simon, and then this long front straightaway is the only really uh, opportunity Andy Kutcher has had the last couple of laps. Any of these long runs to get into the toes. Bonanno made a little bobble in the final two turns. He can't help him. Kutcher won't need it. Big run bumper looking inside this time. How brave is he? Brave enough to get alongside and at the end of the corner, still side by side for the lead. And Chris does not want to give that spot up. He wants to hold this lead any way he can. Kushner looking for a way by. He's been pushing hard, making aggressive moves, but nothing seeming to have stuck yet. Chris, a very experienced driver, uh, ran in the FRP F1600 series for many years. Coming back and running KA Masters here with the Stars Championship Series and putting in the work leading this race so far. A minute plus two laps remaining in this second heat. And with every failed attempt at a pass there, we've added another driver to the mix, make it almost two. Welcome to the party, Mark Steele there on that blue suit and the uh, Beryl Art chassis. And behind him, Brian Daniele's not terribly far. Uh, so how patient will these guys be? We've seen John Bonanno be patient this whole race, continue to give Kutcher opportunities, but I don't know how the guys fourth, fifth, and sixth are. They might be a little more antsy to try and carve their way to the front of the pack, having just arrived on the scene and being that far back here with a minute plus a couple laps to go. It's not a lot of time left in this heat race. Haran again by two car lengths. Kutcher will eat that up down the long straightaway. He might get another shot at him. This time he's going to need to really complete it. He was really good in the last turn. Here he comes again before the dog leg is going to get fully nosed ahead. And this time it's complete. Andy Kutcher to the lead there out. Or Chris, uh, yeah, Andy Kutcher to the lead over Christopher Haran on a turn number two. And for the first time all day, we've got a different leader here in KA Masters. And that's going to start the battling. Back behind him, Haran over the bumper. Bonanno had to fend off a charge from Kastner. Here comes Mark Steele. And the leader is getting swarmed through the scoreboard hairpin as Nearly into the rear bumper went Brian Daniele. A big save by him to stay off the bumper of the 224. And it is all changed up now for the lead. And this is going to open the door for a lot more battling. And Christopher Rand, the driver who has failed to not lead a lap today, has led every single lap of, of the heat race qualified on pole. Falls back all the way to P5 the first time he got past Andy Kusher. Found his way through. Bonanno followed him through. And look at that. Ryan Kasner all the way up to P3. He's one of the more aggressive drivers looking to make those moves. Uh, a little bit of contact there. That racing got hectic for a second. But they will push on Andy with a nice healthy lead over John Bonanno, who is followed closely by Kasner at this point. Yeah, Bonanno started to fade quite a bit. He's not been as good in the last part of the racetrack where Andy Kutcher has been phenomenal. Here we go to the start-finish line. Double sticks in the air. The timer's hit zero. Two laps to go side-by-side side for third. Mark Steele wants the spot from Ryan Kastner. Then he's signaling to them to go forward as he's going by. Kastner lets him go, and Steele takes over P3. And now the gap opens up for John Bonanno. So can Mark Steele, who has come from decently far back on the grid, outside the top three rows to work his way forward. And again, side by side, as Daniele got into the bumper a little bit of Chris Horan, kind of let him take that spot back. Didn't want to get around him uh, any bit uh, less than clean. Unfortunately, it's allowed Jacob Neary to get a little closer. And now, way wide, Horan lets him go there. Interesting stuff, but a lot of gentleman sportsmanship that we're seeing out of this KA Masterclass as now Neary going to go by as well. He'll sweep by Chris Horan. Maybe a problem here for the Cosmic Driver. He is slowing tremendously into the cell tower corner. Yeah, you'd have to wonder, just waving the driver through like that. He's obviously something's amiss uh, with that program, leading every lap of the first race and then heading into this one. Started off strong and then just fell off a cliff, tanking back through the field, trying to figure out what's going on with that cart, but nothing's working for him at the moment. Out front, Andy Kutchner right over John Bonanno, a couple cart length lead. Bonanno closing back a little bit by little bit as they come to take the white flag here. 
Yeah, one lap to go. Mark Steele going to slouch back in that seat there to try and get a little bit of more aerodynamic down the front straightaway. Long run down to turn number two. It'll tighten him up a little, but Andy Kutcher has put together some pretty consistent laps. He only gave up half a tenth to Bonanno last time by. It's one more lap around with a four to five car length lead. That should be enough. Minus any mistakes, but there was one. He missed the apex there in the center of the Mons at turn number four. Bonanno cuts the lead down another car length. Here comes the Northeastern man, John Bonanno, on the charge forward here two car lengths away. And he's definitely closing that gap. Like you said, a couple car lengths lap before. Every time it's coming down bit by bit. Andy Kutcher has to be perfect here, hit all of his marks. He missed that one apex, led Bonanno back into the fight, seeming to hit his marks on the second half of his lap but it's still a close battle in third and fourth. Not far away, Mark Steele and Ryan Kasten are still pushing forward, trying to get on that podium in the second heat. It'll be a last-ditch effort. I just don't think is going to be close enough. This final sector, you've got to be on the driver's bumper to try and stuff it down the inside. A valiant effort, a little bobble in that green corner earlier in the lap for Bonanno when he went a little wide, kind of hurt him. And right here, Andy Kutcher's strong suit's going to take him through to the finish. Andy Kutcher, heat two winner, KA100 Masters. Bonanno second. Holds on over Mark Steele as they go down that long front straightaway. Kastner fourth. Danielli rounds out the top five over Jacob Neary. Haran falls all the way back two seconds away from Jacob Neary. So when something like that happens, Simon, there's a couple of things obviously could uh, have been maybe a flat tire, but he was able to stay on for a bit. So I don't know if it was a tire going flat. I would think also maybe something with the reed cage. Hey, he's certainly looking all over that car as we got a nice shot of him on the cooldown lap, looking for whatever whatever happened, whatever went wrong, because he definitely started off strong, a great start to the day, but in the middle of that race, nowhere to be found. Unfortunate break for Chris Haran. We'll look for him to make better starts tomorrow. Well, we're happy to be back live with you again. Here is the results all the way through the top 10. Beyond Haran, Bailiff, Chris Kutcher, Anthony Stifler, uh, Ming Nan Zhu, Gordon Cameron, Chris Stevens, Bob Davis, Jamie Bradford, Tom Gerstner, Jeff Clyde, and Kevin Simonellick. All 18 able to finish their day. An early finish to the day here for KA100 Masters. They are wrapped up and set for their pre-final grid tomorrow pending penalties. A split of the heats here, especially with Haran falling back to seventh, is going to open that grid up for some uh, shakeups inside the first couple rows. It'll be fun to watch and more to watch. We've got the whole class lineup back live from Newcastle for King of the Castle in the Stars Championship Series coming your way next.